the Santa Fe Brewing Company at the Green Jeans Farmery. You're listening to 10 Drink Minimum with Chris, Billy, Michael, and Smiley. Welcome to 10 Drink Minimum. My name is Chris. I am the host, and welcome to Beer School. Yes. I'm so excited to learn. Are you? When they so said, when they were like, when they said they beer like, class. Uh, we were like, will you, will you uh, host beer class at uh, beer school at, at uh, the Green Jeans Farmery? First thing I thought of was like beer school. That sounds like a bad like 80s movie you might watch on Cinemax. But see, it's also on a, a Friday. <laughs> on a Friday, you're like, there's really nothing on, but I might see some nudity. So, oh, <laughs> but it's also a class we're all going to get an A in. Yeah, I think. So I don't know. yeah, we'll see. So Santa Fe Brewing asked us to come in and uh, and host beer school here at the uh, Santa Fe Brewing tap room at the green jeans farmery it's a lot of lot of words to say um and we have uh, on the mic right now we have monica mondragon hello did i say that right yeah i feel like i I feel like i said that terribly wrong no that's okay uh we also have alana hello Ooh, alana (laughs) i like that name you said that right there are (laughs) in the lovely alana so (laughs) they're here to teach us all about beer and it's one of my favorite subjects of all time, I would say. I've been a big fan since I was a young lad. I know that's illegal, but <laughs> sometimes that's how things go, right? Indeed. So my, my, I, guess, uh, I guess we'll start out. I, I guess you guys are going to tell us how, like, first of all, how is beer made? I mean, I drink it all the time. And, you know, I have ideas in my head of how I think it's made. <laughs> and I tried to watch how it's made, and they didn't show me. So... <laughs> How is beer exactly made? Okay. That's a big question. <laughs> that is a big yeah. question. Um, so you picture like a, a witch over her okay. cauldron. Okay. And, and honestly, I believe, I've done a lot of research, I believe that image comes from women who yeah. brewed. And yeah. it was actually women who brewed throughout um, yeah. a lot of history in Europe and I've seen, I've seen like they found recipes back to the ancient Egyptians. They've well, actually made a recipe. Well, yeah, we've we've been brewing for a long time as yeah. a people, but um, but that image of of a woman, you know, wearing a pointy hat and okay. having the broomstick and and the cat to keep the mice away from her grain. It's a Brewster. It's a it's a female brewer. Okay. Um, yeah. So okay. so it's literally like concocting something over over a pot. You're putting in grains, spices. In our case, it's hops, but it yeah. used to be all sorts of spices. You know, psychoactive how do you, how do you things. Think, like, whatever. I mean, like they always talk about like the cow. They're like, you know, who was the first person that was like, you know, I think I could drink the stuff that comes out of that. Mm-hmm. What do you think the first person was like? I should ferment this stuff and drink it. What do you think that is? I don't know. Well, people always say that it's <laughs> that it was probably a, a happy accident. Yeah. You know, that yeah. something went bad and that, you know, wild yeast just took hold of a batch of, uh, you know, bread dough or something and, and yogurt, whatever. And, and it just became alcoholic. And they were like, let's try to do that again. Yeah. yeah. I like to think of it as like a, a dare, like somebody was like, hey, that's that, not, that's that smells really you bad. Do it. No, you do it. <laughs> that you smells drink terrible. It. Drink that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I dare you to. I guess that's all kids right there, huh? <laughs> I dare you to drink this. I'll give you a dollar. Yeah, but these days we definitely take it to a higher level than a uh, you know, witch over a cauldron. Yeah. And very, very sterile, too. I did a homebrew once, and it was like. Just oh, cleaning yeah. everything, doing everything, how scientific it can be. Yeah. yeah. I was like, man, how do they do this on a large scale sometimes? Well, they say that uh, 90% of brewing is cleaning. Really? Yes. Because it's so important. Uh, wild yeast and bacteria is everywhere on everything. And if you don't have everything totally sterilized, yeah. your beer will taste bad. Oh, yeah. that's what's going on with some people. <laughs> 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 Budweiser, clean your shit up. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. So clean it up. Just kidding. <laughs> That's what I was know. So, what is the what is the process? Because I did it one time, and it really shocked me how close it was to kind of like making tea in a way. You okay. Know? Yeah. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to get sugar for your yeast to eat. Mm-hmm. So what we use is malt for the most part. Okay. Um, and you roast, you kiln malt 
so that the sugar caramelizes in there. You get enzymes, and and then you add hot water, let it steep like yeah, tea, like tea, yeah. And and you get you get all those sugars out, and then you uh, boil it and add hops. And this is the real simplified version, just yeah. letting you all know there's a <laughs> yeah, lot more yeah. that goes yeah. into it. But Well, I didn't want to be um, like, hour number three, we'll be going into <laughs> no. uh, and the then, canning yeah, process. You boil and you add hops for bitterness and aroma and flavor, and, and, then, and then you um, cool it down, mm -hmm. and you add yeast, and the yeast does the rest. Wow. That's a very short version. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. And so, Okay. So have you ever brewed like homebrew? Has anybody ever, either one of you guys ever done that? Oh, yes. Did, did you ever have a batch that you were like excited about and it turned out just terribly? Yeah. I broke the carboy on mine. I was oh. so mad. I never <laughs> brewed again. Really? I worked so hard on it. It was such a big deal for me. And then, and then the carboy dropped and broke and the beer went all over my garage. And I was like, <laughs> fuck this. Yeah. Never doing this again. Yeah. I'm never going to do this again. <laughs> so I just, I just judge other people's beer now. Yeah. I hate it when you have, Much to go to, better. Like you have to go to someone's house to drink their homebrew and it's terrible. And you're yeah. like, yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty. This, this is, this awesome. is uh, so yeah. good. Awesome. It's nice. the rare yeah. person who wants Great. honest No, no, I've got to drive home. Too. I'll not have another. <laughs> <laughs> Those are pretty potent, guy. Well, I yeah, got, exactly. I brewed with mine with a friend and then I never, we ended up like falling out of our friendship. So I never, ever got to try what we made. So I'm uh. like, I'm still like. Curious on what the heck you it may was be we like made. An amazing brewer. I'm, you have I no know, idea. and I have no idea. I'm like, I could be this magical brewer that did amazing <laughs> my first time out, and the... now it's completely <laughs> screwed. Right. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. So, Alana, you actually are a judge at the Great American Beer Festival. I am. You are. Okay, so that that's the only thing I wanted to ask. On that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> I've never been. I've always wanted You've to go. You've never been? No, I know. I know. Oh, What's my Denver? goodness. We have, we have a, like a hate, love-hate relationship with Denver. Because I don't yeah. really – because Denver doesn't really – first, they stole green chili. Um, <laughs> but they didn't – I mean, they didn't. The they don't. The market know. is just yeah, ridiculous. They don't have – I mean, what food What what food is indigenous to Colorado? The, the Denver omelet? I mean, how many of those Eggs. can you have? Benedict? Rocky Mountain <laughs> Oysters. Okay. There you go. That's not good. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, get <laughs> pack in the car. Let's go. <laughs> We're gonna get some. So, my question is this: is like, you're gonna you're gonna kind of tell us, and we're gonna you know sit here and try to figure this out. How how do we how do I drink beer the correct way, not like I'm just <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, there's no incorrect way to drink beer. I like first that of answer. All. Yes. Um, but sensory analysis is is something. Uh, that you have to train yourself on. Okay. It's a learned skill. And anyone can learn it and I think it's I think it's a I'm really passionate about it. I think it's yeah. a really cool thing to be able Definitely. to pick out different flavors in your beer and, and know where they came from. But I also wanna I always do like a full disclosure, you know, warning that it may ruin some of your favorite beers for you. Really? Yes. 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 Ah, oh, damn it, PBR. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> so when you're saying pick out flavors, um, you, it's kind of like when someone eats, they're like, oh, is there a little the cinnamon in there? That was cinnamon, wasn't it? Is mm -hmm. it kind of like that? It's I mean, absolutely yes. like that. Except that you're, you're not only thinking about the actual flavor, but yeah. usually the technique or ingredient that's associated with it. Okay. So do you judge – how do you judge all those beers and not just get wasted? Um, I mean, you spit it out, right? <laughs> I get so wasted. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah, this sounds so inner. But all that's the water fountain. You're like, yeah, it wins. Do you think at the very end you're, at, you're actually like somebody has an advantage of being the last mm. person you taste? Because like, oh, man, I'm kind of buzzed. This is actually yeah. really tasty. But you spit. You like spit the beer out. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. No. 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 That's, those not those, those out wine people that do that. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> so, yeah. So nice, nice festival in Bernalillo mm. wine people took right. that away from you. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Boom. Um, <laughs> so actually, actually, uh, you have to swallow beer in order to get the full sense of okay. bitterness. Yep. Okay. Because you, your tongue senses bitterness in the back of your throat, so you have to swallow. Really? <laughs> I like what you're saying here. <laughs> so 
but I mean, it's like Billy said. Like, if you get to the last person and you're like, "This is the best pilsner I've ever had." I mean, you, you, do you get a little? Well, for for the Great American Beer Festival, especially, they really select judges carefully. Um, How many beers can you drink? Well, <laughs> you know they're seasoned people when, yeah. they're, yes. when they're showing up there, and they yeah. also. Um, uh, you take small sips of every beer yeah. and you're really you're most of tasting beer is honestly your sense of smell yeah and so you're relying a lot on smelling it and then sure taste and mouthfeel you're you're having that as well but you're not like drinking beers you're yeah. very small taste it's like it's like it's like a certified version of the century club uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 Does someone here not know what the Cedric Club's where you drink like a hundred shots do. of beer? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Know what the Everybody's Club yeah, is. I went to yeah. college. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love when you say that and someone goes, Oh, that doesn't sound like a lot and you go, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right. just, I'm like picturing some YouTube videos I guess yeah. through my head right now. I'm glad century. YouTube was not around when I did the Century Club. Yeah. <laughs> so but I mean so it yeah, okay. So take us through, like you're going, walking through, do you just, okay. I guess you guys get to go through whenever everyone else isn't there, right? So, yeah, so we're grouped at, at tables and everything is totally blind. So you're not having bias about, oh, oh I okay. like that brewery or this is my favorite beer or I hate that beer and um, totally blind and everyone is very professional and, and, um, and you take notes on everything yeah. because it's amazing how much bias plays a big part. Like someone will sit here and taste a beer and be like, "Ooh, I taste Fruit Loops," and then you'll be like, "Oh my god, I want some Fruit totally Loops." Tastes like Fruit Loops, and <laughs> and That's and you beer. never would have thought of that on your own. Maybe you have different perceptions. So everyone takes notes and forms their own opinions, and then we share and we eliminate beers and we discuss and. Oh, you. So there is inter discussion between oh, the yeah. judges. Oh, yes. And, and occasionally there are heated heated discussions. discussions. Yeah. Really? Occasionally, but oh, usually. Oh yeah. You're the reason Miller Lite won. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. Um, you have no but, taste buds. But really, what you're what you're looking at um, is a handful of things: aroma, yeah. appearance, flavor, mouthfeel, and then your overall impression. Do you like it? How do all these things work together? Do they reflect? And and you know something that's weird about about beer judging that's mm -hmm. different from just drinking is you are judging according to a, a very particular style. Oh. And like if it's a Pilsner, you're like, is this Right, is this the perfect Pilsner? But, How do you but you're not really that, asking though? yourself, like, is this an amazing beer? You're yeah. asking yourself, is this the perfect Pilsner? Right. So when you say, like, appearance, is, is there sometimes, like, a conflicting, like, this observation is, yeah. is it like you know this is the best pills i've ever had it just doesn't look good absolutely right. really? yes. although okay. appearance honestly factors in the least yes really yeah oh yeah okay. I'm oh but but it matter it matters but it's not you're not gonna like well if you have a lot of beers the appearance doesn't matter anyway right it's like it looks pretty <laughs> it's pretty pretty hot it's pretty hot beer right mm. i'm gonna take this beer home with me <laughs> <laughs> after a little while you know, that's, uh, I've, I've had that happen. I'm like, oh, this is a really sexy lager. Oh, but, you know, just by looking how it's brown, clear and bright it is. Yeah. And, yeah. So. It's like, I like this lager, but it's just, you know, it's the clarity's not there. So I'm just going to leave you at home. Yeah. I'm going to leave you at the bar. I'll, I'll take you out tonight, but I'll not call you again tomorrow. <laughs> um, so what was the question I had in my head before we went on that craziness? Um, so is there like do you have to stay away from the beers that you know you work for you know santa fe brewing do you have to stay away and not judge those yes yeah how do they figure that out um their logistical team is amazing i saw a video of <laughs> they don't drink <laughs> <laughs> they must not it's crazy <laughs> they have a warehouse that's filled with thousands of beers i think they had almost seven thousand beers entered and they're all just buzzing around organizing these seven thousand beers that people have, like stickers on yeah and getting them to the right tables and making sure that people who work at breweries don't judge their own beers okay I mean, it, it's a it's impressive because yeah, there's got to be a lot of amazing. judges how that many, are how many judges are there yeah um, I think there are about 200. Okay. Doesn't Damn. it go up every year? Yeah, it goes up every year because there are more and more breweries every year. It's 
That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. So, how do you benchmark? Like, if they're like, they tell you, you know, the way that the, you're, you're going to give this ribbon for the, the you know, the, the Pilsner is you need to make sure that whatever beer is the closest to the Pilsner as possible. How do you... I mean, completely where, make it up. Really? <laughs> I, so, no, my it's mind actually, just exploded. It's actually really interesting. Um, we, well, we, they, uh, <laughs> they take uh, a lot of historical, I mean, beer, like you said, beers, people have been brewing beer since ancient Egypt. Yeah. And so they take a lot of the historical styles that have you know, established boundaries like um, they have a certain amount of alcohol. You expect a Pilsner to yeah. be this color and have this alcohol content and this amount of bitterness and, and then they make it like hard and fast rules and Really? Um, Is and there like guidelines? Like they, they actually hand yep. you like, okay. Oh yeah. Because I always wonder like how skewed it can get like away from what a Pilsner was to now what people think a Pilsner is. Yeah. You know, just on, you know, taste, people's taste change, you know, I right. don't know. Well, and, and it's amazing when people win those awards and, mm-hmm. and brew, like, they nail it, that beer to that style. But uh, part of what's amazing about our American craft industry mm-hmm. is, like, we kind of make things up as we go along and we, okay. and we think outside of the box. And we've, we've kind of taken all these European styles and yeah. torn them down and, and right. mixed them up and... So they've had to actually rewrite the style guidelines several times oh, in the sure. past few years, and I think that's going to continue. And and you know we're going to taste a beer later today that is a mishmash of styles, okay. and it, we would never probably win an award for it because it just doesn't fit right. into a style guideline. Right. But it's amazing. That's but good. it was and fun to make. Like, I mean, so you have like categories. I'm, there's categories being made a lot, a lot of times. So I would, you, I would think the best way to win actually a medal or award. Is to be that most obscure beer? Yeah. Like say, like I guess chocolate beer. I'm sorry, Working coffee beer. Working the system over there. Yeah. Well, what's well, <laughs> we've talked to people and they're like, oh, you won an award. Yeah, I, I picked the category that was like the least amount of people, and I made a really amazing beer. Right. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, okay, cool, good idea. So what is with that? What is the hardest? What is the category? What is oh, like it's the, IPA? Absolutely. That's what oh, I yeah. thought it was. Yeah. Um, IPA. You know? Yeah. Definitely. It's like the yeah. If you win the IPA, you're, like, throwing the finger on stage, like, yeah! Yeah, I guess so. Well, yeah. It definitely, it definitely if you're like that, the well, most entries of I'm any. not saying I'm oh, like yeah. that. It's, but, a, it's a most competitive category yeah. by far, but... Yeah. Um, As of right now, I think sours are really... Sours, yeah, sours are catching so up. Sours are catching up. Sours so. are really coming sours, on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They are very interesting to me. I haven't caught on to them, like, liking them-wise, but they are definitely catching on, and I'm seeing them more. And I found a couple that I've actually liked, but one question I did have is that Chris was saying that by the last beer you judge, you are like, all right, this is the greatest beer. Or this is... I would think... <laughs> this is the greatest beer. And I'll <laughs> you're like, I'm so tired of beer. I'm like, this isn't going to win at all. Like, it's... Do you right. think, like, they have a better chance in the middle, or do you have a... Because of the taste you have are so small... <laughs> Do you have, a, like, a good judgment over the entire, like, span? Um, I would think the last beer I ever had was the best beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Or sometimes it's the first. <laughs> like, like, Chris yeah. like, what is this? Oh, it's Billy. You're drinking out of the water fountain. It's like, oh, <laughs> shit. Winner. Right. Winner. Gold medal IPA. Gold medal IPA. I've been to tastings. Yeah. Uh, not beer tastings, but I've just, I mean, in general, beer tastings. And you kind of forget the first one, but yeah. you can't stand the last one because it's just like, oh, my God, another beer. Right. So, so... They have um, three judges on every flight at Great American Beer Festival, okay. and each judge mixes up the order in which they taste those beers. So no, so it's you're not all having that last beer last. Right. Okay. You mix it up, so that helps. I think. See, that's interesting. Have the perspective, to me. and these are highly trained yeah. people who are well, not who they know they may have that bias. Right. So they go back and they mix it up, and you really got to. It's also I, separated by style category okay so yeah. like so she's not judging ev- all seven thousand no right, yeah. right right that's what i said i know i know what you guys yeah, yeah. yeah. that so would definitely style. yeah that would definitely create a, a huge yeah. palate fatigue this situation is, but this, uh yeah this is a weird correlation so when i was in high school i was in ffa and we did judging and everything that you're saying is everything that we did but mm-hmm. instead of like beer, it was like cattle. Mm-hmm. Like you would have your four, 
and then you were like, you know, I, and you would you would give your reasons why you placed them in the order that you did. You would say you like you get a flight. You're like, oh, I like this one first. Then I'll, because of this, so this, this, I'm and this. from New York, and I have no idea what you're talking okay. about. Okay, <laughs> in, 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 when you're in high school in, in rural New Mexico, there's yeah. a thing called Future Farmers of America. Okay. Yes, and no one ever really knows Everything. what it is unless yeah. you are in Future Farmers of America. Yeah. And what I got you do it. is, yeah, <laughs> and what you do is is you go to competitions and you judge animals yeah. like you judge beer. So you're like, they're they're nice and. Fat or well, like there's, <laughs> there's, there's, it, it's the same there thing. Specification. You have, you have the you have the the benchmark uh-huh. of what uh, you know a, a Holstein cow needs to be. Right. Right. And then so then you look at the four and you're like, okay, so I pick number one because you know it has the the udder of the cow is you know is strong and she will milk for a while. Her hooks to pins are very wide, so she will have no problem birthing. You know, and it's like this benchmark. <laughs> and but with beer, you're like, I chose this pilsner because it, it you know, it. it this it, explains it, a lot about your love life. Hey, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, it reminds me of the same thing where it's like, oh wow. And and do you guys have to explain it, or do you have to like stand up in, in front of people and say? I chose this beer in this order. Well, we have panels that, yeah, yeah. We, we have to argue with each other. Right. And, and we I'll, I'll put forward, like, I think this beer sucks and yeah. it needs <laughs> to get out of here. And then someone will say, I really liked that. It had a lot of great I like whatever. the aroma. It was fruity yeah. at the yeah. aftertaste. And then I'll say, so, well, yeah, it had a horrible off thing. flavor. It's the same yeah. thing, yeah. Do you yeah. think the ratio, though, as far as people who submit beers, um, is there's way more shitty beers than good ones? Or do you kind of just kind of... I don't know. She I, think want to say. I think that's. <laughs> I think it's all really relative, actually, yeah. okay. in that in that sense. Because uh, we have like, different tastes, you know? yolks, yeah. Exactly. And yes, that's what kind of what she was getting beers. at was like she might think it's not very good, but somebody else might find something. Somebody else who has poor taste might think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I kidding. didn't say it. And when <laughs> when you're when you're getting into the whole off flavor situation, some people yeah. are more sensitive to off flavors than other people are. Yeah. So okay. there's off flavors she's more sensitive to than I am. Well, there's so people she who are might vice versa. Yeah. So are, she is, will is probably th- pick is it out before I do. Is there people sensitive to like the kind of hops though? Can you like tell? You think? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So so takes Bert, practice. So Bird's not here, and I want to I want to give a shout out to Bird. Shout because out to Bird. To Bird. Yeah. He's got a baby on the way. Have the baby. But I wanted to know if that Sam Adams guy really like gets the hops in his face and just oh, like, yeah. rubbing them in. Like, oh like, yeah. Like, like the commercial. <laughs> yeah. Very the much commercials so. tell. The do you guys whole do that? Story. The hops come in and you're like, oh, the hops are in, guys. And we all run down to the truck. <laughs> you know? I just really it's wish like he would Christmas. do like like a creepy exhale, like <sighs> <laughs> as he's, he's smelling it. I would love that. I'm not yeah. sure I've ever seen that. I before. haven't <laughs> seen that. But that but, would be uh, awesome. that would be pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> You guys haven't seen that commercial where he's like, he's like, you gotta get him up in your face. Yes. <laughs> yeah. you gotta break yep. him up and yeah. yeah, yeah, you do. See, I'm glad I'm not the only one who saw. <laughs> <laughs> Are we doing a taste? Oh, they're We're bringing them out now. We're getting tasters. So, can I? Uh, okay. So when we ta- before we taste these beers, I'd like to know how to do this. Yeah. Okay. What, what is the proper way to drink a beer that if I'm gonna judge? Okay. Yeah. You know, I want if I'm judging. First things first, you want to smell the beer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because the smell is the first thing that's going to go away. So you got to get it first. And then you want to look at the beer. Oh, hold it up. Empty glasses. Terrible. Um, no. <laughs> yeah. So smell the beer. Look at the beer. How clear is it? What color is it? What do you smell? And then you want to taste it. And we're talking about flavor and also mouthfeel. Okay. Is it full bodied? Is it thin? Does it dry your mouth out? Is that it co- gritty? That's called right. astringent. You don't want gritty. You do not want gritty. Gritty's that bad. is not good. Yeah, gritty. Sandy um, is gritty, after. not two things. Is it hot? <laughs> is there high alcohol? Um, is it sweet? Is it bitter? So, when when you're doing this though, the beers can't be cold. Well, you don't want them too cold, right. but right. you don't want them too warm. There's right. a there's a a hot spot. Yeah. A yeah, sweet spot, spot, rather. A sweet spot, yeah. A sweet spot. Oh, these yeah. are one, one, one per person. And and yeah. usually when you're judging, they have to oh, pour wow. all of them out. So by the time you get them, they're not always going to be that ice cold <sighs> yeah. temperature. Yeah. yeah. See, okay. Ice down glasses are like the bane Worse. of the yeah. brewing industry. And we'll, and we'll get into this, but my, my beginnings with beer was in Bavaria. Ooh, yeah. some good wow. beginnings. That's where I started drinking beer. 
So it was like coming back to America it was really like a letdown. Yeah, I at can the imagine. Time. At the time. Yeah. Well, now it's, you know, amazing. But um, so, you know, so it's interesting to like, you know, see all this, this explosion of, of the brewing industry. Come the microbrewing f- industry. Mi- well, microbrewing. Well, yeah. Craft all. beer. Craft, craft beer. beer. But craft the, beer. the funny thing between European and I, I, I guess American is the, a lot of European beers are served warm, right? Yes. So that's yes. what I was getting to. Is yes. that... Sorry, Chris. You, like, is that the? Is, I mean, do you have to keep these warm, guys on chill? Hot. Like, it's yeah. hot. Like, well, warm. especially in England, that's yeah. a whole movement. We would but. go. We would go to places, and uh, you're. I mean, you're at. Okay, you're 18 years old. You're at yeah, a, you a, a boys or a kids club, and they have two wooden kegs of beer. They're not, you know, chilled. They yep. just have wooden kegs of beer, and they're on yep. the side, and they have a they have a gravity pour, and you drink hot, warm beer that tastes amazing. Yep. You know, that's 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 Europe. What? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, and this is America right in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> is this water? Is this water? <laughs> this is like the... But it's not okay. Budweiser. Palette cleanser. I have to ask that because when I was in Germany, there was beers that were this clear. <laughs> and I was like, what is that? And they're like, that's a vice and just drink it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So before you guys taste, I just want to uh, go over real quick. There are usually only four ingredients in beer. Sometimes people get crazy and add more, but okay. um, it's... Uh, water, malt, hops, and yeast. And those yep. are our four ingredients. And each one of those ingredients imparts such a wide range of flavors. So really, um, the most fun thing about making beer is picking out from that huge range of each of those ingredients and piecing them together and creating something really amazing. Um, so we've done that for you today. We do it every day. <laughs> so what do we have uh, here today? So today, um, we should probably start with the uh, the lemon, lemon skinner. Yeah. The the lemon saison. It is a saison, but we call it lemon skinner. This beer we're lemon drinking skinnered. is not available yes. yet, right? This is a a preview of our next uh, ECS, which means ever changing series, which is going to be available all over New Mexico. Okay. In bombers. And on tap at select locations, <laughs> um, but it's a it's a brainchild of one of our brewers, um, who's a total metalhead, and we love him. So Dave, <laughs> shout out to you, yeah. wait, wait, everyone! Wait. Look up um, Old Dagger. A metalhead that was Old like, Dagger I think we need a band. lemon beer. <laughs> I mean, that, 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 that doesn't sound right. Nothing says like metal and like hardcore like lemon saison. Well, it's lemon skinner. <laughs> All right. So this is the one we're, we're going to try first, right? Yes. yes. The lightest, mid-lightest? Or it the says dark? lemon on it. It oh. should say. Oh, I see it. Yes. Riff, reading is fundamental. Okay, so remember, smell your smell beer. first. Okay. You can even, once right. you drink it down a little bit, you can give it a swirl so you don't spill all over yourself. And that will release more flavors or aromas. Ooh. Okay, what do you guys smell? What do you taste? What do you feel in your mouth? <laughs> I don't smell anything. <laughs> You don't smell you anything. Don't smell anything? It's a really strong smell. Wow, lemon. we need to like work I on you. I know, I'm, I'm terrible. I'd be like, no, this one sucks too. That'd be at the Great American Brewers. Bad, bad, bad. We all have to bad. train your palate. Everyone right? loses. Hold on. Chris's notes was like, it got me drunk. And I was like, <laughs> no, I actually smell my beers before I drink them all the time. No, yeah, I do the same thing. In general, I smell well. like the lemon, and but I'm usually veer away from them. It's not my favorites. I usually go for a darker beer, but then I went and tasted it, and it's actually, I'm not a huge fan of really strong IPAs or anywhere and like as soon as I smelled it that's what I thought I was going to get and that was actually the oh, opposite man. of it what I got. It tastes very different. It tastes really different but yeah. really really good and at See, the same there time. are certain like ways to describe things that I'm not familiar with like I don't know what malts taste like I don't know what yeast tastes oh, like really. Oh you can taste malt. You, can, you know what malt tastes like when you. Like, are you talking about Whoppers candies? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> are you no, talking no, about like no. a malt sh- I think it's I, that's what I don't I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well the best thing to do when you start in my opinion, is to just think of whatever comes to your mind initially. It's There is a vocabulary that happens with practice, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's ever a wrong answer. Uh, what's the first thing that pops into your mind when you smell it? Hmm. I think, I think, well, I expected a lot of lemon, and I didn't, you know, it was, and I don't like lemon. So it actually doesn't have any lemon. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, <laughs> okay. See, you guys fooled me twice. Yeah. You did the Chai Way to Hell. And well, I love did, chai. Yeah, that had some chai spices. It did, but yeah. it didn't. I was like, oh, this is going to be too rich. I'm going to take a drink, and I'm going to be like, oh. I took a drink, and it was like chai gone. 
Yeah. And I was like, ooh. Yeah. It was nice like and dry. That. So we so, make our beers yeah. like, so that you want to have several of them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and it wasn't rich. Like We're we not came, one and done over here. Smiley and I, you can ask Smiley, we came over here for the, the Chai Way to Hell and the, uh, the Red Irish uh, Red launch. Yeah. And I was like, I know I'm going to like the red. The chai, I don't know, man. I, you know, We'll see. And I like the chai more than I like the red. The, the and I've had it like uh, at some of the bars downtown because yeah. you guys yeah. have it you know, down somewhere. Yep. I've had it since a couple times. I'm like, yeah, you got me. You got me. I would not have tried that if, you know. And now I'm like, every time you, you release a beer, I'm going to try it like that. You know. And especially You're if you hooked. bring back the Highland Heath. <laughs> oh, yeah. We miss the Highland Heath. We would actually, it was like, it was like uh, people who like follow the McRib. We followed the Highland <laughs> Heath yes. Billy, Billy's like, they have it at Sister. I'll be there in a minute. Yeah, as soon as you guys brought out the red again, I had like three growlers. Like I was done. Yep. Yeah. I was ready to go. Oh, man. That's, that's fun times. You said that there was no lemon in this one. No, But actually. the funny thing is when I read lemon, then I, that's exactly what I'm thinking of. Yeah. And so right. that's exactly what I was like, oh, yeah, it smells like, it smells like lemon. It does, and it's mainly because we use the lemon drop hop, okay. which is a fairly new hop out really? on the market in the last couple of years. Um, there's new, there's new hops on the market? There's always new always. interbreedings of hops. Oh, what? my God. Um, yeah. There's no Monsanto in that, is there? <laughs> is there? No. It's oh. um, that's where the like at GABF and yeah. the CBC uh, Craft Brewers Conference in particular, you can go around and they'll have the whole cone hops of all the new varieties for yeah. you to try. A lot of the hop companies will make a a beer that is a single base beer with all the different hops in it. Wow! So you can taste them and be like, oh, I like this new Marilyn Monroe hop. hop. <laughs> <laughs> really big, you know, really big in the South Valley. Yeah, Good idea. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> It's really, really big amongst the uh, <laughs> South Valley crowd. Crowd. <laughs> um, that's pretty interesting. I didn't. I had no idea that. That's amazing to know. So, do you go to like these things where they're like, uh, "Let's come try out these new hops that you might want to buy." Does somebody come yeah. up to you? It's like, listen, I got this new hop. <laughs> again, yes. again. We actually do get yes. those visits. Do you we get do. a magazine yeah. that has like all the different hops? And it's like this one's Sugar There's Ray. This one's <laughs> 40 ounce killer. The playboy of hops. It would be scratch and smell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got these hairs on them. But people try to totally bring out. But people do out. like breed new hops and then they have like yes. their, their, their little selection you come and try. Yeah, we yep. send we send Bert, our brewmaster, up uh, nice. to Washington State every year and um, he smells and. He puts it in his face and he breaks it that. up. He does that weird exhale, yeah. and I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> cuts, off, <laughs> cuts off a square. Yeah. Yeah. them together. <laughs> yeah. And he's actually yeah. brought some back to the brewery so we can all have the Smell same it. experience. Yeah. Gross, guys. That's <laughs> <laughs> You're freaking me out now. <laughs> all right, Santa Fe Brewing. We, were, we had a good run. I mean, we were good, you know, and you got a little weird. And then you got it really strange. <laughs> and, and for those hop heads, though, do you think that there's – there can be too much. I, I know yeah. there it can oh, be. Absolutely. But, yeah. but say those people who are super pretentious, do you cater to those kind of people? Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> we no, we we brew beer that we want to drink. Yeah. And I know a lot of people say that, but it's really true for yeah. us. Um and it makes me want to try the next two beers that are on our plate here because um, they're both IPAs, okay. and IPA is the thing that everyone goes overboard with, and yeah. people think yeah. they have to be competitive. Oh, the triple IPA, the right, quadruple. Right, right. Yeah. You want it to be like the most IPA IBUs Exodus. and, and super bitter and whatever. And, <laughs> and honestly, um, we care See, so much that. more about like ha being able to have a couple, um, having like a well-rounded, balanced flavor. So um, let's taste the... Western Block? Western Block. Western yes. Block, okay. I almost got this earlier. Okay, so you okay. smell it. I what do you smell? smell? Oh, what do you I smell? Can, I can smell the hops. You Other than garlic, skunky, yeah, right? Smell. It's skunky. It doesn't yeah, burn, it it does doesn't burn my nostrils, but... See, I like that. I love that. Yeah, you do. <laughs> it, it's a little bit... I don't know. It has a different aroma than most IPAs. It smells like an IPA, but there's a little bit of something else. So this beer is special because um, we actually have a wheat base that's what it is mm -hmm. yeah because okay why. i grew up on a farm and it smelled a little like wheat because we cut wheat 
Uh, I know. Yeah. She's like, oh, yeah. No, sorry. Again, I'm from yeah. New York City. I like, I cannot remember. She's smell. like, I don't know what okay. you're talking uh, about. When you're standing on a, like, when you're standing in the back of a wheat truck, it smells just like that. Does it really? See, that's, that's yeah. amazing. That's what that's it popped awesome. in my brain. I was like, wow, that smells like wheat. Yep. And that's exactly right. There's there's wheat, and all that hoppy, yeah. you know, bitterness and piney and resinous and yeah. um, all that stuff Ooh. that you expect from an IPA, but it has that really cool wheat base. So just like I was saying, like you say, based on smell, uh, based off the smell, I didn't think I was gonna like it at all. As soon as I tasted it, I'm like, holy cow, wait, this isn't bad at all. Like no. I'm well, that's really enjoying it. Kind of the beauty of this IPA it's is it is, has so much aroma. Yeah. but not a ton of bitterness. Yeah. So and when you try other IPAs in Albuquerque, they're very aromatic, but they're super bitter. Some, some, some reds, bitter. And some exactly reds are just is. blast yeah. you in the mouth. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's why I really love this beer is you still get the entire aroma profile, but it's not so bitter when you taste it that it's just a nice, clean, uh, refreshing it is nice. note Absolutely. on the end. I like that. Um, and then our next beer is our Happy Camper IPA, which is our flagship beer. 80% of our sales or more are, are this particular beer. Um, it took us by surprise, honestly, how really? much people just love this beer. Yeah, I and love so, it. <laughs> so people love IPA, right? But, yeah. but again, we don't go the, you know, <laughs> knock you over pounds the head. Of dry with, hop. Yeah, we don't want to, we don't want to like... Kill See, your palate with bitterness. We want it to be something that you yeah. take camping and can have a few of. And um, so we take pride in it being really balanced, except like also highlighting the hops. Yeah. Uh, I just remember being the first can way. you can actually buy. Yeah. Like, as a, as yeah. A and it was <laughs> also the first can beer, craft beer in New Mexico. Really? In New Mexico, right. yes, the first yeah. one. Yeah. So you guys are the 2010. oldest. 2010. You guys are the oldest, for people out there in the world, you guys are the oldest oh, brewery in New so Mexico. so old. It's. Yeah. You're the largest <laughs> brewery in New Mexico. And I mean, the can is like iconic. You walk in, I mean, it, it, it jumps out to you when you walk into, you know, Walgreens, the liquor department. You're walking through, you're like, oh, wow, state of New Mexico flag right there. It's a can, you know? And, you know, I, I would say some New Mexicans take a little pride in their state. You know, they're like, you know, yeah. you, you ask somebody, which New Mexican tattoo do you have? Do you have the, the chili? Do you have the, the Zia? It's a symbol. It's a Duke. Yeah, and then we kind of carried that over into yeah. the black IPA, uh, yeah. which is my favorite can design ever. I think it's the oh, sexiest the black with can the silver. design. It's black. Yeah, it's super sexy, like black and heart. silver. Are you a Raiders like fan? Is that what's going on? <laughs> no, he is. <laughs> um, oh, you are New Mexican then. So, <laughs> how? So, oh, I'm sorry. How far does the camper reach? Like, well, where can you can you buy it? Yeah. What's the farthest like location you can get it in? Let's give that to Soto. He, hey he's the man. Hey guys, uh, I'll let you know. I'm Jason Soto. Um, you can find uh, Santa Fe Brewing pro products as far east as Louisiana, Missouri, and as far west as Utah and Arizona, and uh, all ten states in between. Oh, shit. really? Nice. Ten states. They drink beer in Utah? What? <laughs> <laughs> My head exploded. Hey, yeah, that's what the gold is for. Just kidding. They have beer. There. Actually, I do want to eventually end up like in say a CVS in Missouri and see a, a happy camper. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, never I had the chance, like I was just in Missouri and, um, I, I wish I knew cause then I would have had my friend pick up a, a six pack of, of Santa Fe instead of what she got me from Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> it was all really fruity beers. What she bought. And I'm like, yeah. what are you doing to me? Like, this isn't <laughs> what stuff. Kind of crap is this? Like, what is this? Yeah. Like, that, whole, that whole fruity beer. Like there was a, you know, run when, I don't know, like three or four years ago, people were making them. Like, I went to one brewery here that's no longer around, and they had, like, 18 different fruity beers. <laughs> and I was like, what yeah. the hell is going on Fruited here? Fruited beers are kind of a big thing. I mean, even... Blueberry. Uh, there's Not a, a beer thing. There's a, a, a craft brewing company that just got bought out for a billion dollars. Really? Um, that are basically fruiting all of their basic styles. Why? Everything. You can get watermelon, pineapple... Oh. Tanger, whatever. Right. <laughs> okay, I don't. I, I don't hate on fruity beers. No, but I mean, you but know. it has to be done well. Just yeah. like any spice or addition yeah. that you yeah. have, it has to be balanced. What's and the What's the weirdest? I mean, when you go to the GABF, what is the weirdest like concoction that someone has done that you've seen? You don't have to name who they are. 
well, I don't know who they are. That's oh, okay. that's the amazing part about, <laughs> about yeah. it all. I wish I did. Um, so, the, yeah, there have been, like, you know, pink peppercorn, whatever, Weird. lots of, like, funky ingredients. But, honestly, the worst beer that I've ever had was at GABF, and it was... Um, it was viscous. Do you guys know what, what viscous means? No. In beer? Yeah. It's like thick. Like sludgy? This, my co-judge put a pen in it. Mm. And it was a slime <laughs> that oh, <gross. laughs> went the whole way. And so I didn't know. This is actually so a really embarrassing win. story Not a for yeah. me. Like, so there are like 100 people in a room or whatever, 50 people in a room. And, and everyone is dead silent. Everyone's super serious. They're taking notes. This is a concentrating. You know, this, is, this is the biggest beer yeah. competition. And, 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 and there's a lot of you know the, in the country. And yeah. so people are serious, and and everyone's silent, taking notes. And and I taste this beer, and I smelled it. I was like, oh, it's infected. I can smell that. But wait, and wait, I tasted did you say it. infected? Infected. Infected. Yeah. Yes. And then I so there's a certain kind of bacteria that actually makes the beer thick. Ew. Yeah. Ew. And so then I tasted it. <laughs> I might get in trouble with the GABF for, for sharing the story. I don't know. But, no. but I tasted it. And it they was. Don't to the show. And the slime went from. Like, it's. St- it, there was a string. There was a yeah. string. Oh, and, uh, gross. I, and I gagged. I, like, I audibly gagged <laughs> in this room of, like, the most professional beer judges in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I went. Oh, and, oh my gosh. It was, it was like. It was so embarrassing. Several several people turned their heads and were just like, "What?" And at least my my co judges on that panel were like, "Oh yeah, it's bad." <laughs> yeah, exactly. I told you. So, is there any time like where you like look at a beer when you're judging and just say, "No, I'm not tasting that." Like, could you have done that with that one? Like, or was that beer made that way for a specific? Oh no, no no no! No, it wasn't made. No, that no one, one would that's ever what make a thinking. beer no. that way. No, exactly. That's never that's on like, purpose. Why? So I could why wouldn't that, that just be gonna turned? Be funky. I could why wouldn't smell that. that just be turned away like right then yeah. and there when you notice that it was? Because well, you want to give I, everybody I an equal opportunity yeah. to try. Right. And as a judge, it's well, kind and of they pay a lot of money to enter their beers and they want feedback. And so and so it's not just like an elimination round. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. How do you write down? <laughs> <laughs> I asked how did you write that down? Oh, yeah. How do I write that down? question. Because all the notes do go back to the, like, all the notes from all the right. judges do go who, back to the breweries. But they don't know who you are, though, right? No, it's thank all God. blind. Oh, thank yeah. God. Thank God. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know who they are, and they don't know, who, yeah. like, we know now. Like, firebombed <laughs> your house. That's terrible. Yeah. Have you ever, okay, so I'm sure this happens. Like, you, you, you're in the Pilsner category. And you're like, oh, this beer is not like a Pilsner, but it is amazing. Mm-hmm. Does that happen a lot? Yeah, that yeah. happens sometimes, and it's so tough because oh. you just have to write on their comment card, like, you should have entered it in this other category, <laughs> right. or, you know, maybe a specialty beer or something. You should have, you should have put uh, it in the but peach it's so schnapps good, category. But it's no. not beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and, and they do have kind of catch-all categories to try to accommodate oh, okay. those beers, but but right. it doesn't always fit, and yeah. yet there are a lot of amazing beers that don't fit into the categories, and honestly, as a judge, it is frustrating to taste those beers and be like, this should win some sort of award, yeah. but... That sucks. Yeah. So that's got to be the worst part. Well, it's really like, oh. hard even when you're submitting beers, because... If you're not making a beer to the style that you're going to submit it in, you're just making your beer. We literally, you literally yeah. have to rifle through all the style guidelines. And be like, which category does this fit in oh, the okay. most? How much does it cost to submit a beer to GBA, GBF? What you roundabout? Know, it depends on if you're a member or not. Yeah. Um, and I forget. I think there's a. I, I'm not. A scale, but you know, it's um, it's like a hundred bucks or something i don't i don't know oh a hundred dollars oh that's why the guy's like ah it's sludge but whatever hundred dollars <laughs> <laughs> that sounds terrible though that sounds well, like the worst thing ever well you know um things age differently in a bottle too that that's like true. maybe yeah. when they bottled it it was totally fine yeah. maybe right. clean the bottle no so idea like that. that the infection no idea, was yeah. gonna take it that's over the thing. maybe their their brewing <laughs> process is perfect but their bottling line is dirty exactly wow um but also, like, That's when you take them aside. You're like, hey, man. <laughs> hey, your house you light is your perfect. Clean your bottles, man. But your 
Woman life is dirty, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I Unfortunately, that. I think what happens in those situations is they do taste it later, but they've already sent the beer to JBF. Yeah. And then what do you do? You recognize it after you've sent it out. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, man. So I've heard that light is like one of the worst things beer can ever UV encounter. light. Do you know why? No. No, I don't. <laughs> but I, was, but I, I do want to know, and I, and I brought this up for a special reason. But uh, what's what's is it because why? your beer is tasting no. funky right now? No, nope, nope. nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw someone under the bus. <laughs> okay, so um, oh, you just throw my beer under the bus. I <laughs> see. <laughs> 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 Billy, Billy likes Miller High Life, and it comes in a clear bottle. I love Actually, it. Actually, Miller High Life Wait, is an exception to this rule. How so? so okay, so so it's hops. Yeah. Hop oils get in the beer, and sunlight reacts with them and creates literally the same chemical that skunks spray. Yeah. It's the same Skunky chemical. Beer. And um, Somehow Moosehead does it out of the, out of the gate. And you know what? When Just you kidding. have when you buy a Heineken or a Corona, you almost expect that skunky flavor yes. because oh, yeah, it's part yeah. of it. It's in called the like United the import flavor. That's weird because that's like in the United States. When you're in Europe, it doesn't taste that way. No, it does not, not at all. No, they put it in those green bottles, yeah. which and those clear bottles, which uh, obviously more sunlight or or even even uh, fluorescent light from a cooler. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't even have to be in the sun. But seriously, put any of these beers out in the in direct sunlight for Done. like a minute, Done. and it'll taste like a skunk. Yeah, it, it takes. I didn't realize it actually produced the same time. oil. But Miller <laughs> came up with something amazing, and they came up with a hop additive that did not react with sunlight that way. Weird. Okay. So Miller High Life, champagne of beers, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Registered trademark. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they actually don't have that issues so they can put their beer in the clear bottles and oh. it doesn't have that skunky flavor and uh i do enjoy me some miller high life occasionally oh, oh man <laughs> thank Boston. you thank well, you talk about your all-time backfires uh -oh. <laughs> that is an ultimate backfire he's well, ready to talk smack but then i was like listen oh, i like to you're talking about my beer no all right mm, well it's very happen. different so i like to think about things in beer geek levels yeah i've had this conversation with silas quite a bit um you reach a certain beer geek level where like lockers are amazing, and and then <laughs> nice. you start to realize like how hard it is to make an American lager that clean yeah, right. consistently, yeah. and then like On a then scale. yeah, so you start off being like screw those guys, screw the big guys, they're awful, and you're like how do they and do, then like, how do, they do that? Yeah, right yeah and then you're like why do they it's <laughs> so consistent? Yeah. And then and then when you delve further into it, like my experience as a lab manager is. All the protocols I use, they developed. Right. You're, you're you taking, know, yeah, you're, they you're, have the best chemists and yeah. biologists and all and like, of that. And so. like you said, like just remaining consistent yes. is the hardest that part. That is the hardest thing to do. Yeah. Because your beard tastes the same every time I have it. That's oh, thank gotta you. Be, that's got to be a skill. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. It's thank you. Definitely. <laughs> this is definitely being consistent. There's been other breweries. I will not name oh, yeah, them, yeah. but I've <laughs> had it, and <laughs> it's just, it's been so from one, like, six-month difference to the next, it's it's been it's such a huge difference where yeah. I've stopped drinking it for that point, and then it's like, all right, it's been enough time to where now I can have that beer again. It's like, okay, they got it back together again. I, 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 yeah. I can remember one particular brewery, I'm not going to name them, but there was, <laughs> like, just kind of, <laughs> but they would have, like, a different beer, like, every I guess two or three months, and it maybe it was the same beer, but it's like it tastes different, so we'll just call it something else. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that that's, that that seems like it sometimes. My my question is, I mean, we'll, we're getting close to the hour time, but I want I want to kind of do this. Everybody, I mean, we didn't all come from you know we we, we started somewhere that wasn't yeah. craft brewing. What is Cows. your favorite? Huh? Cow judging. Cow judging. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not where I started drinking beer. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I started. That's where I learned about judging. Yeah. So my grandfather, like he, you know, he drinks the worst. Oh, your sign fell down. He drinks the oh, worst shit. beer possible. Um, Which is? And my thing. Oh, everything. Still oh, reserve. Okay. Oh, he's drinking still reserve now. Well, oh. hey, it's got oh. higher ABV. And I, I, I mean, go home to visit. he's older, he's 80, whatever. He's 89 years old drinking still reserve. <laughs> Colt and I was 45. like, holy crap. Oh, but I mean, my favorite thing about like his beers growing up was like I'd always read the slogans on the cans. And I still love that. Yeah. What are your favorite slogans on the cans of beer, like when you were like, you know, coming you know, uh, from all time? Champagne of beers. I already Champagne said of beers. Yeah. yeah. 
Right. I always Classic. wondered what the banquet beer meant. Uh, See, I always wondered what, what the beer <laughs> of champagne means. Is. Which one's the which one's the champagne? Which one's the beer of champagnes? Mm. Yeah, it's the champagne of beers. I'm here to tell Monica the the, the story of the Coors and how it became the banquet beer. Um, okay. So at the turn of the century, the the miners and the the, the folks who were drinking the the Coors out in the out, out in the sticks out in Golden. Um, at the end of the shift, they would all uh, go to the, the local bar because there's nothing else to do but drink. You mine all day, then go drink. And they, uh, they, they colloquially called it uh, their banquet. Oh, so I didn't know that. Join us for the join us for the banquet every oh. day, every, the nightly banquet. So wow. the Coors became the banquet beer. Okay. And that's okay. The, that's how that's how that's that's, that's the story. Know, I <laughs> the old timey. I got an official miner over here. Can you can you back that up, miner? Yeah, I got a mine. Nice. I got I, I got a, I got a plan in the, the audience. <laughs> got an official got an official miner to back up that story. So that's true. Well, I, I always wondered that as well. I never knew that. Like, like mine, like coal miner, not mine, like not not under twenty one miner. I mean, like coal <laughs> miner. Got a guy that's miner. Here, Just want to make that clear. A, I did not bring I did, hey, a eighteen year olds over there in the house. Give me yeah. a shout out. No. I mean, so, this 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 might be a second hour question, but are oh. we doing the uh, the first beer for everybody? Yeah, yeah, we'll do that second hour. Okay, so. What other what other what other slogans did you guys like? Uh, I'm a big yeah. fan of uh, Schlitz. What's just, Schlitz? Just a kiss, 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 of, the kiss of the hops. Schlitz. Yeah, just a kiss, kiss of, of the hops. hops. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Have you had? Okay, question about Schlitz though. Did you try the when they came back out with the original 19 like 67 mm -hmm. formula? Did you try that? I tried the formula that cost uh, eight dollars a twelve pack. <laughs> yeah, that, well, so so apparently right. what happened was is they refound the original. Original formula. Oh, hold on. We'll get there. We'll we'll do questions in a second. Hour. <laughs> okay. right. and they found the original formula, and they re. Uh, they said, I don't know. Was it good? Yeah. Yeah, it was probably. I liked down it. Down in a basement somewhere. Yeah, they said they found it in the basement. Pulled it back out. And, and they pulled it back out, and they re re yeah. issued it. And I and it was like seven ninety nine, like a six pack, and I thought it was amazing. Actually, I was like, oh wow. And my favorite, uh, old timey, especially old timey, is Olympia. Ah, it's the water. And I'll tell you why. Because yeah. if someone's like, this is gross. Yeah, it's the water. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or if someone's like, this is great. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the water. water. Yeah. It goes either way, right? I actually have a friend who uh, took a photograph of their old staging area. Yeah. And uh, I bought a print of it that I have in my house from Olympia's old. Oh, no uh, kidding. Yeah, what? they're old That's awesome. See, my grandfather place. would be, I just yeah. remember when I was a kid, my grandfather would, uh, I don't remember which beer it was, he would pull the, the, the top off and it had the little, like, you had to figure out the puzzle. Yeah. On the cap. Oh, that's Mickey's. Mickey, nah, that's well, Mickey's does uh, a form of it, but it wasn't Mickey's. It, I can't remember. And I remember the pull tabs when I was a kid. So oh, pull tabs. Yeah, it was pull there's tab, those yeah. two. Okay. But my grandfather would like look at it and it'd have like an eye for eye, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> but I, I remember all that stuff. I mean, I've grown up be around beer my whole life. When I was 12 years old, my mother, I, uh, my grandfather had a, a keg fridge and we lived across the alley from him. And my mom's like, go get a pitcher of beer. And I, I got this much beer and this much foam. And my mom goes, we're going to go back over to that house, and I'm going to show you how to pour a beer like a man <laughs> pours a beer. It's yeah. time. And it's you time. can ask Billy Belma right here. I, I, I can pour a beer. Can pour I like a beer. The mom. thing is, uh, <laughs> my mom taught me. Uh, I had a problem with pouring uh, Miller High Life into a, like a, like a pint glass. Yeah. And so I would get super head all the time. So Chris was die on his deathbed. I was sick. I was sick as a dog, but I would not have this happen. <laughs> and so, so it's like, oh, man, because I, I was – really big into drinking out of glasses at that point uh. whereas I can't drink Miller High Life from a 40 like a, like a normal person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so it was like God, I, I can't, I can't uh, pour this beer and he's like from his I get deathbed. Up my deathbed. I'm like, give me the beer in the glass. And so on his side he just pours <laughs> and it was and there's like this much yeah. head I was like, there, that's industry standard. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I learned that I was like 12. I just watched my dad and I'm like, you just, I yeah. figured out how to pour a beer by myself. So I was like, how did you know how to do that without getting so much head? I'm like, this way? It was... Yeah. I watched you do I, st I still I don't watch. know. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I've not worked enough I behind still, the bar. And, and I still have my bucket list beers. I want to have some old style. I want some uh, Natty Bow, National Bohemian. Mm. Mm. Very, very... That's you know, old style. Very regional. Very <laughs> regional. <laughs> and uh, they're hard to find. I mean, I've had Lone Star. Lone Star's regional. Yeah. So, right on. 
I want to, I want to, you know, so let, let's end this first hour and let's take a, you know, a 10 minute break maybe. Yeah. And, Sounds uh, good. I want to, I want to thank everybody here at Santa Fe Brewing and, uh, thank the crowd that, that, that's here for listening. Thank you. So the second hour, yeah. we will open up the panel for, yeah, man. for, for questions. Yes. Yeah. And I'm really, ex- I'm really excited for the, uh, discussion on our very first beer. Yes. We'll talk about that in the next hour. Um, and so, yeah, I guess we're not going to, we won't do any kind of like, yeah, whatever. So anytime you want to check <laughs> our show, we usually, we, this time of the show, we usually talk about like what we have coming up and going oh, yeah, over. We're not gonna do but that. we'll skip that this time because this is your show uh, here at Santa Fe Brewing at the Green Jeans Farmery. And I would like to, I would also like yeah, to talk a little bit about, beer. I'd like to also talk about this facility as well. That's, you know, that's coming up in the second hour. So don't leave. Uh, if you have to go get a rock and taco, you know they'll bring it up to you. Don't worry. So <laughs> it's not a big deal. Um, do we have uh, some music we can play? Bocadillos is pretty good. What's that? Bocadillos. No, nah, don't worry about it. They got music here. Okay, so we'll do that. Uh, if you ever want to check out our show, we are Ten Drink Minimum. We do our live show usually on Sunday nights from six to eight p.m. at tendrinkminimum.com. Um, you can go on our website, add us on all this cool social media. Uh, what, what is your guys' website? What, uh, what do you guys SantaFeBrewing.com. SantaFeBrewing.com. Um, all the beers were amazing. Uh, try the lemon, say, the lemon, what, Skinnered. Santa Fe Gold is my favorite. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Santa, Santa Fe Nut Brown. But uh, I want to thank the guys for letting us be here. We are 10 Drink Minimum. Thank you. Santa Fe Brewing Company at the Green Jeans Farmery. You're listening to 10 Drink Minimum with Chris, Billy, Michael, and Smiley. Uh, welcome back to the second hour of 10 Drink Minimum live at the Santa Fe Brewing here at the Green Jeans Farmery. Can we turn the monitor up at all? We have no monitor now at all. Hold on. Test, test, test. Boo? What happened? I think okay. I'm live over oh, okay. here. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, all right. Well, yeah. <laughs> is that, if it's we recording, kind of Chris, I'm Ted Ringman. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Billy's here. Michael's here. And Smiley's here. Smiley's here. And we got the whole crew from the Santa Fe Brewing here. It's one so, grand party. Yeah. So we're in what we call the wavy hour. Usually that's when we're, you know, a little, little bit, you know, wavy. 
<laughs> way back and forth, <laughs> this way, way that way. We've had some good beers. We had some good talks. Um, one thing I want to I want to like do in the second hour is uh, I, I have a new show that's coming out. It's it's my solo show. It's going to be called uh, the Beer Soaked Memories, and I want to talk about like people's you know their their their, their <laughs> memories of beer throughout life. You know, sounds weird, but one thing I want to talk about is like you know the first beer you've ever had. Maybe some memory that you have that is a, you're like you know what, drinking beer. I've had some really good times. Here's one of them, and I've had some really bad times. And here's one of them. <laughs> so if you, if you want to share any of those, that's absolutely fine. But one thing I do ask is that you do share the very first beer that you ever had, and that comes from like a, a segment we used to have way back in the day. And you can also do this as well because this is an old tendering minimum mainstay. Mainstay. It's like the first concert you ever went to. And it's very amazing to hear, like, the first concerts people ever went to. And I'm not talking like, you know, I went and saw this local band. I mean, it's like the first famous one. So for, for this show, it's the, what was the first big, you know, what was the first beer you ever tasted? How did that go? Did you like it? Did you hate it? You know, and, and, and I'll start up. I had a Budweiser, not Bud Light, but it was Budweiser. And I thought it was disgusting. It did not taste good. You know, like in the movie uh, Can't Hardly Wait, he's like, he takes a drink of the beer and he goes, nobody drink the beer. The beer's gone bad. <laughs> that was me. And I was like, ew. And it took a 19 year or an 18-year-old kid to fly uh, across the world to be in Bavaria to understand that beer is tasty. It's, it, there, there's a good taste to it. But, you know, the funny thing was, I didn't think that that Budweiser was good. But I still had six of them. You know, I still right? Had, uh, so you had to have Yeah, that's yeah, how that works. Yeah. So let, let's go around here. I kind of want to find out because, you know, I'm, I'm interested. You know, because, like, you have the beer evolution. You know, I had that Budweiser. Then I went to college, and I was drinking 40s of Mickey's in the parking lot with my friends in college. Because that's what you do, right? Right. You're like, oh, 40s of Mickey's. Or Mickey's Wide Mouth Beer Grenades. These are amazing. Yeah. yeah. And then the older you get, you're like, I can't believe I drank that. <laughs> like, why did I do? I do that to myself? What the hell? I have a really funny story. We did a 40-ounce show <laughs> where we drank 40s. And uh, I'm an IT guy, so I show up to the, the oh, what's the liquor store across the river? Uh, oh. Kelly? The Monte Carlo. Monte, Monte Carlo, Carlo, yeah. I go yeah. Up there, and the guy stereotyped me. He goes, oh, I'm looking at the 40s. And he goes, hey, guy, we got bombers over here, too. <laughs> like, there's bombers in that one, and there's bombers in this one. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I pull out a 40 of Mickey's and a 40 of Bud Light. Oh. And I carry it to the thing. And he goes, going old school, I see. <laughs> huh. All right. <laughs> yeah. I still have not. We, we actually talked about this on a previous um, yeah. my drink, my uh, 10 drink minimum show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I have never done an Edward 40 Edward hands. 40 hands. And so. Well, drinking I, in mass quantities uh, isn't. Is isn't, not recommended. Uh, not but recommended. No. Yeah. Is. Will happen sometimes. Yeah. But it's not recommended to do. But we, we we have on the show this this hour we have Soto, who's you're one of the you're one of the salesmen at uh, your head the head of the salesman. What, what would yeah, run the whole sales department. Hired yeah. all these guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and you'll fire them too. I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm, le I'm leading the push of the global yeah. domination of Santa Fe Brewing. Where where are you from? You have an accent. Like it's is it Kentucky? I originally grew up in Kentucky. Yeah. Nice. So beer. I'm, I'm glad you actually knew that, just well, from. Well, I mean, it was Tennessee, Kentucky. I mean, there's you know that that area. He's probably offended now. He's like Tennessee. <laughs> but a little bit. How little do you, bit. how do you how do you get to beer, from from Kentucky? Because Kentucky's you know you got whiskey and bourbon and. I got a great story. You're gonna love this. So, I love stories. <laughs> so I uh, I grew up in liquor stores. I. Mm. Uh, I, you know, a single parent family, mom on the yeah. week, dad during the, dad during the weekend. Well, dad, his uncle, came back from World War II with a with a business model, and you're gonna love you, you your folks are gonna love this. He was a he was a, 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 a Navy man in World War II in the Pacific. Uh, scored a bunch of ill-gotten gains, uh, 
trinkets, this and that from the enemy. Came back here, sold them. <laughs> as uh, that was his seed money, and this wow. was the, this was the most. I'm gonna I'm drop I'm gonna drop some serious bo knowledge Wait bomb minute, on did you he guys. Did he sell like some artwork from Europe that Hitler had stolen? <laughs> no, no, he was he was as I as I hear it the is this is the, this is the way I was told. We're gonna you know we're going deep in the history here, but. Um, the Japanese soldier behind enemy lines would carry, you know, lots of money, lots of currency, lots of valuable things. And um, my grandfather, being the old bastard he was, uh, he would he would pilfer however to get him. I don't know how he got him. I wasn't there, you know. But he would get the stuff. He brought it all back. And let me just – this is where the knowledge comes in. I'm drop a bomb on you. Okay, so he pioneered the business model of buying a trailer park and putting a liquor store next to it. Okay. Wow. And um, that's how my grandfather uh, <laughs> sort of—that was his empire all over the southwest. And he sold he was, upscale beers. No. Oh. No. Okay. Um, that's not how that works. He. Uh, Schlitz. He would, the Olympia. He would, he would take your last nickel for you uh, for a, a, a gob of spit in a thimble. He would do. That's oh, the yeah. kind of businessman he was. But uh, I grew up in liquor stores, and um, you know, like like to sell things, and uh, you know, went you know went to college and. Blah, blah, blah. I found it up at uh, Santa Fe Brewing. That's that's how I got here. So it was your first beer experience, Sody. Okay, my first beer experience was, uh, it was pretty good. It was a Bud Light, not going to lie. Okay. Uh, I'm going to name names here. I'm going to drop some more names. The uh, I, w I was with my cadre of cohorts back in the day of, of young young uh, whippersnappers growing up in the, the holler. The, oh, see? It's a colloquial wait, wait, wait. term, also you, known you, as a you hollow. Can't, you can't throw the yeah, a holler out. See, people don't know what a holler is. I don't know what a holler is. He he has no idea. It's uh, basically a, a valley that's I do. closed at one end. Yeah. Only one way in, only one way out. And you and can yell down the holler, or, you know, yeah, hey! You, gotta, you, could yell out, you could yell to your neighbor, and you just, it's like the old texting system. You yell to your neighbor, they yell to the next neighbor, you yell to the next neighbor. By the time they got to the end, you don't know yeah. what they were saying, but everybody's doing their yeah, thing. Yeah, holler, down the holler. So we were, uh, I, I grew up in southeastern Kentucky. It's like the Vietnam jungle there. It's so green and lush and mountainous, and the mountains just go st grow straight up, the oldest mountain system uh, uh, on North America. And uh, we had the, the six-pack Bud Light. We cracked open exactly two, put the other other four in the creek. Put them in oh, the yeah. creek because, you know, we, we were 14 years old. We didn't have ice. It was hard enough bootlegging a uh, six-pack, which I didn't, <laughs> which I did not bootleg from my grandparents. Just uh, just thought throw out there. We got those. We, we got it the old-fashioned way, the old tap, and uh, hook us up with it. Here's, here's 20 bucks for a six-pack. So we, we, we got four guys and a six-pack of Bud Light, and two were gone. And just before dusk, one of the other guys, like I was saying, I was going to name names. Uh, Mike Sizemore's dad, Gary, shows up. And he knows we got beer. He's like, all he's got to do, he's like, starts looking around, rooting through our stuff. It takes him about three minutes to find, like, the six-pack in the creek. And he takes the other <laughs> four and uh, dumps them all out right in front of us. And oh. my first beer was one of six of those four, uh, those four beers. The soldiers quite, died in the river. Quite, quite heartbreaking. And we did not have backups. We just had no. to sober it up and just cook out hot dogs on the fire later. So oh, man. That's a bummer. It was sad. Let me ask you this one. Okay, I've been to western Kentucky. And you couldn't buy packaged alcohol at all where I was at. Is that an is that a normal thing throughout Kentucky? I mean, is that it is a normal thing in that uh, there, you know, it's a coin flip to see who's dry county. Yeah, the, the county I I grew up in it was funny was it was surrounded by dry counties, but in the, it was the wet county. So everybody around us drove yeah. to the center to to buy booze. And see, if you were shipping booze, you had to drive through the wet or drive through the dry counties to get to the wet county. It's yeah. ridiculous. Well, what, what, what blew my mind was is I I automatically assumed because I'm from like eastern New Mexico, Texas, West Texas area, I assumed they were dry because of the the, the churches. That's yeah, the, the, well, that's I was part told, of the Bible bill. Well, I was told that's not why. Why well, if it's not they, they didn't I was tell told me that why. the the, the, the <laughs> what I was told was is the moonshiners Whenever they try to pass laws to make a county dry, they fight it. That, that uh. they pay money. They you know they they strong arm and they you know whatever. I would think there's money to be made off illegal alcohol in that part of the country. Yeah. Is, that's uh, why they do it. I, and I say that because yeah. I drank moonshine last weekend. Yeah. In a bad 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 choice. I would say <laughs> I would say you're you know 
in the in the this day and age doesn't hold much water, but you know, hey, go back thirty years, mm. you know, when I was a pup, and uh, that that could very well stand. I mean, people were still operating by the good old boy system uh, in the South, and they they still to, do yeah. to this day. I don't think we have enough time on your program for me to explain the good old boy system. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll no. Come, I, we'll, I, I grew up. I grew up. Yeah, like I said, we'll, I we'll come back Texas. to that on another. We'll save that sure, for the sure. next episode. Sure, sure. So, is there anybody else want to share their their, their first beer? I've got. I've, I think I've got a good one here. Okay. Introduce yourself. So, so Josh. I'm Josh. I'm part of the New Mexico sales team, along with Sody that was just talking, okay. Silas across the way, and a shout out to Zaber. Okay. So, like yourself, my first beer was Budweiser, but I don't okay. remember it very well. Wow, that's kind of like and consensus it, here. It's like I, everyone's I, trying Budweiser. What is the king? I'm pretty no, sure Budweiser. I was younger than you were. I, there's video proof. Uh, I'm going to throw my family under the bus a little bit. Yep. There's video proof of me about two or three years old being passed around, getting sips of beer from my grandfather and oh, yeah. aunt, aunts and uncles. All the way around. All right. Uh, yeah. That's good to hear. All right. <laughs> so, do you so, remember? Do you remember the mini beers? Anybody remember those, like, the little ones? That's where they were like, I was like, oh, that's for a kid. It's little. (laughs) Go ahead. Sorry. So over time, uh, uh, Guinness is what first introduced me to something other than the light American lager. At at 13. At 13. I moved on to Guinness. uh, uh, At my first restaurant job, part of their focus was craft beer, and it was actually Santa Fe Brewing here that really uh, influenced me so much to find this career. So much so that I named my dog after the Hefeweizen. Oh, okay. I, I, I wanted to bring Hefe with me today, but he couldn't oh. make it. He's, I think he's more famous than I am. More people know his name than, than my own. But he was totally named after Santa Fe's Hefeweizen. Okay. Isn't there like, okay, the, the whole thing with the chicken killer has got to do with a dog, right? It does, yeah. I've heard this. I think, I think I'd like to tell that story. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a few of us know it, and it changes every time you tell it. It should so, yes. just a little bit. So it does. Is it going to ruin my times? life in having chicken killer? Is it going to destroy me having that? Or? Yeah. Okay. No, 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 not at all. So no, I was okay, in cool. Dallas, We're Texas. I was in this place called the Flying Saucer. They have 200 beers at all times, and they rotate. So, of course, I'm like, well, what beers do you have from New Mexico? They only had one, and it was the chicken killer. So the chicken killer. So <laughs> Petey, Petey was, a, was a, a Dotson, you know, a small dog. You wouldn't expect much out of a, a dog like that. And he mm-hmm. lived a rough life. Uh, at, at one point, he was unfortunately burned with some hot oil being thrown oh, no. out the front porch, and he was underneath the stoop. And that turned him into a wild animal, and he'd get wow. a hold of anything he could. Uh, on, on the day, on the day that we had the, uh, on the day we had the, the party, we had a little barbecue, you know, for everybody at the brewery to taste the new unnamed barley wine. And that day Petey got out and nobody noticed because of the high gravity of the beer. <laughs> Petey found his way over to the chicken coop and took oh. 27 casualties. Oh my God. Holy shit. Oh, I'm sorry. So Holy in honor, how many? 27, 27 casualties. And he's a dachshund. So he's like really running around because those chickens are like running. I mean, they can run from him. Oh yeah. And he's really going. It's an it's an aggressive little dog. That was a little zombie dog. Yeah. I'm gonna say. So in in honor of uh, of of Petey, we threw him on the bottle. We named it after the chicken killer and put a couple of the casualties. Is, is on Petey the still around? Petey's not around anymore. Aww. Can I just say that the best part of this story is that the chicken casualties get larger every time anyone <laughs> tells, <laughs> tells it. It's he amazing. jumped over the fence and there was so, 37 yeah. chickens. So, uh, so do we know how much trench. do you read Yeah, I know. Was, I've heard ask? people tell it like it was 8 or 18. Yeah. 27. Was, Mind being a new record. Had, okay, right, so a new I'm record gonna, here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defend my number 27. He had here. a rampage in his heart. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like 37. If anybody's a Kevin Smith fan. He was a murderer that day. <laughs> there's, there's a book on the history of New Mexico, and it claims both 20 and 27. No way. It also calls him Petey and some other names. So I, I encourage you to keep raising it. It's a legend. Petey it's a and legend. Sam. And it lives, and everyone has their own version of it, and that's part of what's amazing. But There was a fence, the beer but Petey was strong. a daredevil. Yeah. The, beer the beer is, is strong, strong, and the beer is good. Yeah. yeah. That, the chicken killer is awesome. And we honor Petey with is that not, that's one of the big, you know, That's like one of the most famous beers you have, right? The chicken killer? Yeah, you know, it's weird. It's it's not one of our more popular beers. We make actually pretty little of it. Yeah. But, but it has a it? diehard following, and, oh, wow. and people yeah. get into it. I mean, I think I've even seen that name listed in the New York Times because they were so <laughs> like, well, that's different. Who would name their I'm beer? A huge, I'm chicken a, killer. I'm a huge terrible. fan of barley wines, so chicken killer is definitely one of my favorites. That's here. It's definitely a good one. And we yeah. like to mix it with our other beers, which is very... Yeah. What? So, yeah. 
can I just throw a question? Like, I heard, I, I know I do it too at some places, mixing beers. Do you guys do that with any of the beers here? Oh, yeah. So we have a whole chicken mixers menu. <laughs> um, right. And people come up with the, these awesome names. And there's no chicken and, in any of it. <laughs> and there's an, It's totally vegan, actually. <laughs> not um, gluten-free, but vegan. It's not gluten-free. Totally free. liquid and totally vegan. Yes. Um, but you just add a little splash of chicken killer to pretty much any beer. And we come up with the cool name, and we charge you fifty cents extra, and <laughs> and it's delicious. And That's not much, though. I mean, yeah. it no, and it adds like because Chicken Killer has such this big body and alcohol and uh, you know a lot of flavor. It's like a ten percent beer. It is. Yeah. So it, it basically just like enhances the so current you need beer less that of you them, have. You, know? you need less of them. Right. It's always fun. It's popular. Yeah. Try it out. Yeah. What, what was your first beer? Oh, my yeah. first beer. That's okay. Um, I remember my first beer. I was definitely yeah. in junior high school. Oh, my goodness. And my dad drank Kolsch. No, not Kolsch. Grolsch. Grolsch. Grolsch, Grolsch is what Ooh, I'm looking Grolsch. for. Grolsch. With the swing top. Those are good. I mean, they're skunky, but they're good. They're skunky, but they're good. And, yeah. And, you know, I'm one of those people who actually, like, loved shitty ass yeah. and, uh, <laughs> imports and American beers. Oh. I was like... Give me an old English 800. I'm like, I'm ready. I'm, I'm there. Like, Have you done Brass Monkey? Um, yes. 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 You so I grew up in New York City. We drank 40s on stoops. Nice. And I stole my daddy's Grolsch. And, and yeah, I just love beer. And I thought I like knew what beer was. And then I went to St. John's College in Santa Fe and met my husband and he was a home brewer, and he's like, he brought this really strong Belgian beer with him, and it's dark Belgian. And I was like, What is this? What? This is magic. This is what amazing. the hell? Amazing. And that like, was. The, the, I thought I knew beer. Like yeah. I thought I liked beer. I and was that's like, when you got married, I like right then. Rolsch. I like <laughs> OE. I'm I'm ready for beer. Did you just off beer day? grenades, man? Come on. So you're talking about Santa Fe? You like you're totally like chola style, with <laughs> just with everything. <laughs> Well, it blew my mind and, and it changed my whole perspective and then and then his dorm room turned into a brewery <laughs> and then we got married. And, wow. And actually I'm gonna throw a shout out to him because uh, he is creating the brewing program at C N M Oh, oh cool. nice. here in Albuquerque right now and um, if you're interested in becoming part of the beer industry and learning, um, Keep an eye out for their course catalog and whatever. Yeah. I'm gonna Are Nick gonna Jones, Nick Jones, shout out. I what love kind of, what him. kind of class could husband. you go to where you like make a beer? Yeah, man. Yeah. He's making that class. That's dope. It is dope. Yeah. Are they gonna build like a like a brewery on site? Yes, they are. What? Although some dude is suing them oh. right now because it was like a public um, voting thing, and this one dude is like, "Wait, you're gonna use public money to?" Build a brewery to like educate the public about beer brewing and getting them jobs in this booming industry in New Mexico. I would answer that with like, yes, we are. That's terrible. <laughs> terrible. That's a horrible terrible. idea. What are you thinking? Like, manufacturing and jobs. <laughs> yeah, right. So anyway, the, uh, that's but terrible. they're they're making it happen and and it's exciting. So check out CNN that's if you're cool, interested man. in entering the industry. It, that's that's how big it is in in Albuquerque. It's like. Brewing is so big here, you can go to school for it. <laughs> it's like, oh, nice. Very nice. As a matter of fact, we prefer it. You know, it's like, oh, how nice. Oh, yeah. Hi, so I'm uh, the Craft Crusader. I uh, direct social marketing over at Santa Fe Brewing oh, Company. Oh, are you the guy that's like Twittering over here? Like, My name is Luke. Yeah, I'm Luke Macias. Uh, I've been in the industry just writing about it for a long time, but luckily Santa Fe Brewing Company scooped me up and put me in... Uh, there's social in, media. Yeah, in, in social media, I, I do events. We do everything, you know. Oh, yeah. You're the guy that's like that, like likes our shit. Because yeah. like the Santa Fe Brewing, like <laughs> one day like out of nowhere, it's like Santa Fe Brewing loves loves this tweet. I'm yeah, like, that's oh, right, man. Nice. <laughs> that's right. We, I yeah. like and I share. Yeah, that's right. I'm nice. all about the love, spreading nice. the love. So, my first uh, experience with with beer was, of course, we all have the grandpa pick. You know, yeah. I have that great picture of my grandpa with me you know instead of feeding me a bottle he's feeding me a bottle of Budweiser of course yeah, yeah. Uh, I got that you know 
picture picture proof right there. But my first actual experience with beer, uh, you know, you remember sleepovers, right? We yeah. all had oh, sleepovers yeah. as kids. Everybody slept, you know, you, your buddies would come over. You Play have some pizza, Nintendo. watch Ninja Turtles, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, we had one of those. I think we were like 11 years old, something like that. Oh, shit. And uh, this, is, this is about the time where shenanigans begin, right? Yeah. So at this point, you know, my buddies, there was like two of us, um, three of us. We, uh, we decided to break into the fridge, you know, after, after mom went to sleep. Because my mom was a good beer drinker. She's always been a good beer drinker. She's yeah. been a beer drinker since I can remember. Sounds like my mom. Yeah. They should hang Not out. like all our moms. Come on, right? Like, yeah. we needed to start somewhere. So my mom drank her beers, and uh, she had all kinds of different cans and everything. So we had our buddies over, and uh, she went to bed. Pizza was done. Video games were over. Nintendo, Super Nintendo at that time. Yeah. And um, we decided we're going to break in and sneak some beer. So we I went like over to the first, like, wait, wait, wait. Like was, it, was there that kid break that's like, this is a bad break idea, in, guys? You're breaking into a <laughs> Yeah, there was, there was. And it, the, unfortunately, that was not me. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, uh, we, we snuck in there through the dark with flashlights, you know, thought we were cool, opened up the fridge, and there's a bevy of different beers before us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there I am reaching for the, the prettiest can at the time, <laughs> and I grab it. It's beautiful. It's green. I think this is something I want to drink, right? Heineken. So, nope. Let me get to it. All right. So, so we Castle grab Rock. this beer. We grab a couple of them. We take them back to the room, of course, you know, with flashlights in the dark in our probably footy pajamas. Oh, man. And we're sitting in there. We're, we're taking, taking turns, taking sips of this beer. And we're asking ourselves after about a few minutes, you feeling anything, man? You feel anything, bro? You, I'm not feeling anything. Are you feeling anything? I don't know. I think I'm drunk. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm what wasted. is this stuff? Yeah, man, I think I'm wasted. Yeah, one of one of our stuff. So, no, we knew beer. We knew beer from the sodas. We knew beer from the sodas or pop to all oh, my Midwestern people. Big up is. to them. I know um, this is. So we had this beer that we knew was beer. I know what And we this were is. drinking it. And... And we put it back away, and, you know, we thought, oh, yeah, we're probably drunk. Let's watch the rest of Can Hardly Wait or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're wow, hanging she's out. she's so hotter now. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 yeah. Luke, I'm your age. Luke, it was Sweet 16 with <laughs> the Molly Wingwall. Yeah. You were waiting for Jake to bring whatever up the cake. The movie you know was. that. Yeah. Yeah. So we're getting there. For 16 candles. We wake up in the morning, and my mom asked me the question. She said, did you get into my beer? I said, uh, what? Uh, <laughs> what do you no. What do you mean? <laughs> and she's just laughing at me. She's laughing at me. She's cracking up. My friends go home. She's still laughing at me. She said, "Did you break into my beer?" I said, "Yeah, okay." So we had a couple. You know, we we got drunk. I'm sorry. She said, "You didn't get drunk. You were drinking O'Doul's." <laughs> yes, I knew it. Oh my God! As soon as you started talking about it later, I was like, "Wait a minute!" Wait a minute. <laughs> That's so duels. I knew it. Yeah, I know it. The best would be like if one of your friends was like, "I'm so wasted." Oh yeah, I'm. I'm oh, sure. Trash, you know, after oh. you know, 20 minutes, we're pretending. But oh yeah. So my first experience with craft beer, though, like, I had a buddy that was working with me for the state, and he said, "Hey man, you've ever had that beer? You know that IPA?" I said, uh, "I don't even know what an IPA is, dude." I had no idea. IPA said, is that like a road? That is that a road we drive down? It's, 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 it comes in that can with the state flag on it. I said, oh. well, I'll go try it. I tried it, and I said, I like IPAs now. All of a sudden, I was, started, I was starting to drink real beers, I thought. Wow. But yeah, that was me. Happy Camper was my first craft beer experience. Oh. Wow. Oh, oh, right? And here nice. I am. Years and years later. You guys home are trying to hard. You get to keep your job. To the bosses here. <laughs> you get to keep your job. You get to keep the job. <laughs> oh, Jules. So my first beer story is the same. Budweiser, Grandpa gave me Bud. Um, my first craft beer that I ever had, I was criminally in, uh, you were what, no investigating who? myself. I was 12. Oh. <laughs> but Whoa, hold on, hold on, uh, somebody let me gave dial. me a Pete's Wicked Ale, which isn't around Oh anymore. my God, I haven't even heard of that. And I Pete's, remember that. Pete's Wicked Ale oh. was my first craft beer ever. There was, was like Sam Adams and Pete's really Wicked Ale. It was really hoppy, yes. and I was like, wow, this is what beer can be. What happened you to know, that? Wow. Uh, they got bought out, and then they slowly killed it. 
Pete killed himself. And yeah, fire unfortunately. And the brewery. <laughs> yeah, there was a fire in the brewery. There's a special place in my heart for Pete's Wicked Ale because it was so flavorful. That's like it a, was very hoppy at the time for what, what was, the, was out. There was Pete's Wicked Ale, and then there was like the the the. Uh, wine coolers that were like Bartles and James. Bartles and uh, those James. are not around anymore as well. They used to have well, those commercials. And there, it's the same time as Purple yeah. Passion. I don't know if you guys remember Purple Passion. Oh, <laughs> Zima is still big. Zima. Purple Passion <laughs> was Zima's so really yeah. Big in Brazil. Zima, those were my what? options. I could drink Purple Passion or Purple Passion. Holy crap! Yeah, or uh, I could drink Pete's Wicked Ale. Purple Pete's Passion was a was a, a two liter bottle yeah. of uh, Everclear headache. and uh, yeah. Headache and heartache. A really bad fruit. <laughs> Horrible edits. bad decisions. <laughs> But yeah, do I get so. the Mad Dog 2020 or do I do the Purple <laughs> Passion in yeah. there? Which one? Yeah. I don't know. I wasn't so smart back then. Just saying. But, uh, how yeah, that was how, my how first old are we talking here, though? She sounds like she she's said my 12, age. Right? She's, she's saying no. all the same look yeah, that I know. No, I'm uh, older than you think. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lady. You don't ask games. But, at, come that come at that time, you were like a teenager, right? What was that? At the time, this all happened? Yeah, I was still a teenager. Very much. And actually, I had Santa Fe. Santa Fe. Uh, not long after that, so I was fully what year aware. Was Santa Fe, was, what year did Santa Fe start? 1988. 1988. 1988. Oh, I should really? look at the sign like a you know non dumbass. <laughs> like oh, oh, there's a sign right in my face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Big, big sign so out there. I'd already had their beers for. Wow. Oh, I mean, I, I started working with them two years ago. Yeah. Um, but I'd been drinking their beers. Okay. Since probably about '95. Yeah. What I what, so. what I really like about the, uh, the Santa Fe culture is like we, we you know we had meetings to do this show, and you guys were like, well you know I just, we just want to tell you our mission statement. Our mission statement is we make beers for the regular person, like they get off work and they want to drink a beer, and that's 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 you know how we make our beers. And I was like, cheers. Well, that's how I like to drink my beers. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm that regular person that gets off work, and I'm like. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna I just caller, want that man. beer, damn it. Yeah. yeah. And I used to li- like actually work down the street, and I would like drive down here, and I, you know, if there was a game on, I would actually stop in and watch the game, and I, I like that. Like you guys have that culture and that attitude, and that's phenomenal. So you want that guy that got off work? It's like you know what? I need something I, really rich and fun. I need rich. I need something like savory <laughs> and with juniper berries. Do you yeah. have that? <laughs> right. yeah, that? No. Beer for the working class, for good people. Yes, man. Beers that we like to drink. Oh. That is definitely what I I've been served here. in a goblet, please. Yeah. And uh, I just got I, I just got off work. Just look at me and I'm not me. I'm not gonna mention names. There's a brewery that, that that they have beers that are like seven and ten dollars, and I'm like, man, beer <laughs> beer is the working class, yes. you know, alcohol. Yes. yes. And when you have a beer that's seven and ten dollars, I'm like, that's really not working class. I don't know, you know. That and, doesn't work at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's no class. It's Whoa. No class. It doesn't work. <laughs> All the puns. But it's like, it's like eh, you know, I, I thought that when you guys were like, yeah, we make beer for people, for regular people. I'm like, good. Because, yeah. you know, yeah. that's how it should be. Okay, so this is what's kind of amazing about the options that everyone has is that, you know, we do what we do, and... It's our niche, and we make yeah. beers that we want to drink when we're like camping and going on the river yeah. and hanging out after work. But, but I think there is a place for those brewers that there are. Yes, brew there there are the crazy expensive. Yeah. Not in my refrigerator, but yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> you know, I but may not like pay ten dollars for them, but no. but I think there's a place for that, and um, yeah. but we're not trying to be that. No. With the vast majority yeah. if of I, if, if, well, if my dad came to town, I was like, let's go get a beer, I would bring him here. And, you know, he would find something he likes. Absolutely. And, you know, that's that's how it works. Hey, and that and totally ties into the whole green jeans farmery yeah. thing. Yeah. Right. Because this what, is a place that's more, it's about more than just beer. It's what, a great what, place to bring dad. So tell me about this place. You know, this is like, when we first saw the schematics... They were someone put them on Facebook, and I showed it to Billy. I was like, "Look at this place that they're building," and we actually got to come to the soft opening. We were here the first day. Um, that's when we met Silas. Actually, yeah, the first day. yeah, Donovan from Rock and Brew. Yeah, got us in yeah. Here. We actually drove Donovan home from Rock and Brews, <laughs> and it was uh, <laughs> and it was literally this. We're like, "So which house is yours?" And he's like, uh, "It's got a mailbox, man." <laughs> he was so hammered. His girlfriend yelled at me the next time I saw him. She's like, he brought Donovan home, and he was so drunk. And I was like, 
He's the one who invited that us, is not man. Our right. <laughs> Life goes on. I can't make him not drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that we were here at the soft opening. And like we sat here and we were just like, man, this is going to be amazing. We live downtown. There are nine breweries within a mile of our house. This is not one of them. And we come to this place probably more than most of them. We call it uphill. Mm, so yeah. <laughs> But we will Go take uphill. we will Uber here. Yeah. It's, right. it's, it's we have we live in our downtown bubble yeah. and it's yeah. great to be here. We in Uber Denver. here and we'll hang out here and then we'll Uber home. Very yeah. cheap. Very cheap. <laughs> so I want to actually want to know what Silas's first beer. Yeah, oh, I would like to know that. That's this, yeah. a very curious question. So I'm Silas, uh, obviously sales with Santa Fe Brewing. Uh, been in the industry about six years. Uh, started with Marble, was there about four years. Uh, did some distri- distribution work for National for a year. Now with Santa okay. Fe for a year and a half now. Um, yeah. My first beer... Uh, like pretty much everybody on this panel was a Budweiser. Dang! Yeah, pretty much. Um, Budweiser. I was about 16 years old. I was uh, already kicked out of my house and living on my own, um, working at uh, Village Inn. <laughs> <laughs> at 16. <laughs> And it just, you know, I mean, uh, all the cooks, we'd go out in the back, you know, after the day of work, and they would just pop open a bunch of uh, Budweiser's. I hated the taste. Absolutely could not stand it. So I would drink, you know, a a can in about two seconds just to get it down, just so I didn't have to taste it. Try to drink it as fast as I possibly can. That's why they call you Shotgun Silas. I guess so. I mean, that's where where I'm at. So, (laughs) But, yeah, I mean... It was Budweiser to start, but, you know, craft beer, my first beer was Samuel Adams. Samuel Adams, okay. Boston Lager, loved it. Uh, really? Really, really opened me up to the craft beer side. Started drinking some more Steiner. Pete's Wicked was also Pete's around Wicked at that up. time. Uh, what was the one that the Stone came out around that time as Pete's Wicked? Arrogant yeah. Bastard was a big one. I think at that time it was a little too hoppy for my taste. Yeah, yeah, Arrogant Bastard I, was I, I, I do not yeah. like yeah. I do not like the Arrogant Bastard. It was well, Arrogant Bastard much. at that time was like it's a punch a in the face. Much. Exactly. He used to really hate that I would bring home Arrogant Bastard. Is that yeah. Mike Litt? Yeah. Is that? Yeah. It Hold on. Sound live. Click it again. Um, Do it again. Talk on it. Hello? There you go. There, there we go. go. There we uh, go. Yeah. So he used to really not like that I loved Arrogant Bastard. Uh-huh. And would yeah, bring it home. And, uh... <laughs> Mike, you gotta help me with this beer. You know, it's arrogant. Nah. We should drink oh it. Oh my god! Nah, <laughs> and it was, that was the first beer I ever saw sold in a growler. Yes. In yeah. the liquor store, like, yes. like, well, it's already in the growler. Yeah. At the store, <laughs> and <laughs> it would take us a while to get through that. Yeah, yeah. it took a long. Oh, it absolutely. Took a long time. I mean, that's yeah. a lot of uh, that's a lot of bitterness for you. Well, and, and they initially only sold it in twenty-two bottles. Yeah. Right. So right. now you have like a six-pack. Which was not available to us Gross. in the '90s. Even even now, <laughs> I, I, I cannot deal with Eric and Bastard. I it's, really can't. It's pretty. You know, it's pretty. It's like fun. it's like the Bigfoot out of like Sierra Nevada or whatever. Yeah, right. Nah. It's, but the Bigfoot's too much for you. It's too. It's yeah. fucking too much. It's right. too much. I right. I love the Bigfoot. So. Well, yeah. that's the thing, you know. That, I mean, yeah. I've tried beers all across the country. I mean, everything from Cascade to Russian River to all the yeah. highest end breweries and. Well then, you know, then there was the big like, like I remember. Okay, then then the, then Fat Tire was like fucking god. Right, and, uh, right, right. I hated that beer so much, <laughs> and people were like, "That brewery is amazing," and I was like, "Okay, let me try another one of their beers." That one tastes like shit too. Right. Also crap. <laughs> really? Oh, I fought. Oh man, I, I would get in, like arguments with people. They're like, "This is the greatest beer ever made." I'm like, "It is terrible." It is absolutely <laughs> terrible. Disagree, disagree. All right, I disagree love, over here. Disagree. We got I, this. I, I, I love that uh, eighteen, whatever they have. The fifteen fifty four. That's 15, terrible. 15, that beer is 54. garbage. That Actually, so fifteen fifty four was a great 54. beer. I but know you, you guys, enjoy this. They're gateway beers. That was my beers. favorite beer they gateway ever made. Gateway beers. Nah. They're ga- yeah. yeah. That's exactly what they are. Whatever. So yeah, no. They're, they're there's everything right with that. People get exposed to yeah. New Belgium New and Belgium. Sam yeah. Adams and yeah. and they Sierra taste those Nevada. beers and, and Blue Moon even. Oh, Blue right. Moon's a I'm, good one. It's yeah. sacrilegious, but... <laughs> you know what, though? If it's you go Blue to place, Moon but and, it, it people, and people say, oh, my God, Simpsons, you guys. Simpsons. But it all depends. It all depends. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> people taste it and they're like, oh, 
beer can be something different. Tasty. Right. Yeah. And right. and then and then it excites I don't drink them enough anymore. that they right. seek out other things. <laughs> oh, Mickey's so and Moosehead. I support Blue Moon. Yeah. Yeah, New Belgium, Sam I see, Adams, I do support all Blue those Moon. beers. It's like the safest shock beer top. you can get. Shock Top. I yeah. hate to say I support <laughs> Shock Top. It's right. disgusting, but uh, yeah. you know, there's limits to this. But it is a gateway, right. and <laughs> and it's exposing, and they're trying to get in the game yeah. or whatever. But really, what they're doing is just exposing more yeah. general public to what we're doing, and they're gonna yeah. buy into lots of other things. That's true. I, I guess that's one way to look at it. I, I always looked at it like, you know, that's a terrible beer. I don't want to drink it ever again. Well, that too. <laughs> but like, but, hey, note, but Chris <laughs> hates green chili. In the end, we all started with Budweiser, right? Well, that's it true. Pretty, so yeah, right? you got to start Budweiser. somewhere. Yeah. So you Blue Moon and Shock Top are actually yeah. what no, I used to drink those, and that's the a, I agree. Youngins but, are probably starting with, that is yeah. you know? yeah. right? In, but in like a the way. kid, like. Who wants to be cool? So he's outside of the all subs. Like, the hey, can you can, can you buy me him? Can you give me some, <laughs> some shock tops <laughs> and 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 a sack of oranges? By the right, way, that's I horrible. need that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I could probably buy the oranges on my own, but I don't want to. So back to me, like, like actually, yeah. Fat Just Tire was the all. first dr- first beer I ever had. What? And, and imagine that being like the ho- as hoppy as it is. <laughs> right. Fat Tire what? was the first beer I've ever had. It flat was tire, huh? I think <laughs> flat tire. But no, like I, I thought it was the grossest thing in the world. Like how do people drink these things? And it wasn't until like after like maybe f- gosh, 5 years later when I was in college that Miller High Life kind of <laughs> Miller High Life took hold on your life. <laughs> o- o- opened me up life. to You're better what, off with the other no, one. No, the thing is like it you start, upgraded, it's, it's, right? It started yeah, it, <laughs> right. <laughs> See, but now, yeah, now that I know, now that you know Fat Tire was your original love, you know, I will if, not give if, you shit about Miller High Life. You, you, you kind of, kind of have, have to have value with what you, with the money you're buying. Yeah. I, I don't know. So High Life, $13 for a 30-pack? Hell yeah, yeah I'm going to do that. Oh, man. We, <laughs> when I was in college, Red Dog was amazing. Yeah, like, oh, yeah Red, Dog. Red Dog. Yeah, And it's terrible. Or Ice House. Oh, ice house, no. if, ice house. Was, if you uh, wanted, to, if you needed to clean out your body, ice house. Mine was oh, Keystone. Yeah. Natty was Light. Keystone. Oh yeah. man. If you're on that spectrum Natty and Light. you're on Steel Reserve, does anybody remember so Sun Light? <laughs> oh, man. I was I was five years old when I had my first drink of sip of Budweiser, but my first actual beer was. Um, I want to say it was a Blue Moon. Was my first actual beer in, in and college. And that's a good. And that's a good beer. For for it like is. yeah okay if you walk into a it's restaurant not, and they're like we have Bud Light, since. we have Miller Light, and we have Blue Moon. I'm gonna go Blue Moon all day long. I will because I'd rather go with the the beer that has the most flavor. I'm not excited. As long as their lines are clean. The only time I ever go for Bud Light or Budweiser nowadays is if I'm at an event that that's all they're selling. Yeah. It's like all right, well. Here, here, here's a different question. So once you were like, I like beer. What was the next step? And you were like, this is, you're like, you know what? I started with this crap, but now if I have a little cash in my pocket, this is the beer I buy. Who has that story? Because me, it was always Shiner Bog. I had that well. story, and I'll tell, I'll tell it first. <laughs> it was always that, Shiner Bog. I, that beer turned out to be like, uh, it's your competitors. Yeah. But, okay, so this is, I'm a beer drinker now, I got I paid. I got paid today. I'm going to buy a six pack of this. And it, it was Marble Red for me. And oh. that, that was kind oh. of like their, their big thing. And it actually... It was. I didn't actually know Santa Fe was a big thing until after Marble came around because yeah. they were really they were prominent his here. Because they were isolated. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's a little bit. Isolated. And the thing is, you guys are the biggest brewery in New Mexico. Yeah. Whereas you know they, they they have a big following here in Albuquerque. But right. But yeah, so I didn't actually know about you guys, and gosh, until like 2008, <laughs> 2000. No, sorry, 2010. So yeah. yeah. Oh, it, as soon as I I remember like in Portales, New Mexico, where we went to college. We'd walk in and they had the cans, the yellow yeah. cans. Those, uh, and that's when I knew, I knew the IPA. I always knew the IPA. And, and, I was and then uh, the porter, right. the state pen porter. Those yes. were the two that I knew. But for me, like when I was in college, it was like, man, I thought Shiner, because Shinerbach was the closest beer I could buy when I was in college to when I was in Germany. It wasn't the, it wasn't great. Exactly. It wasn't great, but it was the closest. It's. The closest to until s- until I drank Bass. And yeah. then Bass was pretty damn close too. It's actually Shinerbach is one of the commercial examples 
of that style yeah. here in the United States. And, and I've had European friends. I'm like, what do you drink in America? And they go, they, they mm. drink Shinerbach. Shinerbach? Yeah. It's very, it's very exactly. interesting. Exactly. Like, yeah. It is. Because that German family in, in Spitzel, Texas, or where the Fredericks Yeah. Were, they exactly. know how to make a they German. They know what they're doing. They know beer. how to lager. Yeah. I, I want to jump in here. I was a big. I love Shinerbach. I thought yeah. I was a beer nerd because I like Shinerbach. Yeah. And I'll never forget the day when the owner of Santa Fe Brewing was like, "Oh, you like Shinerbach? You know they use food coloring, right?" Right. And my whole world was crushed. crushed. I was like, oh, man, I thought all beers were, yeah. I, I thought everybody was honest, man. I thought this what was Ryan fuck? Heiskabot. Man, I thought yeah. we were cool. No, nah, yeah, no. Food coloring. Ah! They make they make a summer that I'll still buy. No, no, yeah. No I mean, I, I, I do, too. Still, it still tastes still good. But, the, you know, yeah. now that I'm I'm in there, I'm, I'm in the brewery, I know. I got yeah. the knowledge. I watched the grain come out of the hopper, you know. It, it I, destroys I you a little bit, right? Yeah. It hurt a little bit. It hurt. I'm not going to lie. But as far as beer geek levels go, um, I'm probably the one person at the brewery who spends the most time and the most amount of money Yeah. seeking yes. out new beers, beers <laughs> flavorful what's, beers. What's the beer out there that people My, aren't drinking Monica's that Monica's the they first should. person I've ever met who would leave her, leave her belongings behind to put beer in her luggage to <laughs> yeah. get yeah. home. Yeah. I don't yeah, need yeah, these clothes. Yeah. So I'll just buy new ones. <laughs> yeah, I'm take yeah, this no. shirt. No, it's, yeah. I got this beer so, for free. I shirt's can still in shirt. carry-on. That's not what's, a big what's, deal. What's a beer out there that people aren't, aren't drinking that's like, that they don't know about that's like hidden? It's like a hidden gem <sighs> that's, out in that's, the world. That's, that's a really tough question. Um, My, it, it really depends on what style you like. So well, I like the Highland Heath. Where's that at? I, Where can I find that? I think um, you're asking. I think you're asking the million dollar question. Yeah, it's What's a million dollar question. Um, well, just recently, it, being in California, yeah, uh, two weeks ago, they're super big on coffee beers and saisons. Ew, gross. Well, uh, saisons, well, coffee beers. I'll drink a saison, but a coffee beer, I'm I not. Love a beer. I, I love, love a coffee beer. I love a good coffee beer. beer. No. Uh, it's really big out there right now. They're like, uh, um, Starbucks is closed. Let's get a coffee beer. <laughs> but no. but oh one God. of my favorites, and I'm going to throw out a name, is De La Vega's Pecan Beer. Ooh. Uh-huh. Yeah, people beer. love that beer. Uh, I actually have never had that it. That pecan They're beer good. is They're absolutely. Great. No, I've had the pecan beer. Yeah. I have. No. I okay. don't know. I, I, I enjoy it. It has enough I do flavor, too. but none of my family like it at all. Like, I do. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, well, this I thing like is it. amazing. Like, it has so much yeah. flavor and, like, the smell of it, the taste of it. I actually like it because I lived in Las Cruces for five years. Yes. And we had pecan trees yes. all right. yeah. in Luke our backyard. Luke wants to know how many you guys can drink because he doesn't believe you can drink more than one. I can oh, I can have a six, six pack, pack of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can only drink six one. Six pack. Yeah, I had okay. about like four of the pecan. So Vega I'm gonna beers. pipe in a little bit here delicious. because I actually believe that I'm really amazing at predicting beer style trends. Okay. Not that anyone listens to me. But I'm listening right now. I'm listening, listening, right listening, right listening Alana. I liked sours when people were like, "What? That's disgusting." No, sours are great. It's all about bourbon barrel aged porter, no, and I was like, "No, no, no. no. Yeah. sours next thing, y'all." So. I predict that people are going to bounce back from the extremes and that we're going to – right now, Saison is big yeah. out on the coast. Saison, you know, people are into that. It's a little funky, but it's also balanced. Okay. I think we're going to go back to, like, like English-style English style. things. Yeah. I think ESBs are going to be I'm like kind of hot. I don't know. And I'm they've been so not hot. But I, 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 I very I, I, So not hot. Yeah. But I think they're going to be hot because we'll talk about making there. a yeah, balanced yeah, yeah. beer. We, 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 we've, been <laughs> to, we've been going to we an English We might be having an alternative prediction here. But, I think but sours will continue to be I hot. I think we're also going to go backwards. And people are going to appreciate lagers again. Loggers. Uh, yeah. Loggers. Yeah. Pilsners, My Box, yeah. Doppelbox. Um, See, when, when are the Kolsch's going to get their day? Huh? <laughs> They're going to get their day. Right? They're going to be right Kulsh's, in there. You know? I yeah. love a good Kolsch. I love a good Kolsch. Kolsch. Let, me, let me tell you guys, the best kept secret at Santa Fe Brewing is the Black IPA. Turn your microphone around. Turn the microphone yeah. around. The, the best kept secret at Santa Fe Brewing is the Black IPA. All the people watching this show, after this, go out and get the black and silver can and try it. Nice. And then 
Then email Monica at SantaFeBrewing.com <laughs> and tell her what you think about that beer. Uh -oh. Okay. No, and we, we do. I want to say that we do have an audience mic over here right now. Actually, it's yeah. Perfect. yeah. So if we got if some questions going questions, on, step right up to the mic and win a prize. We got prizes for yeah. all the folks. If you guys want to ask, ask a, question. a question, or you want to tell, a, or you want to tell a story about the first beer you ever had, by all means, you can absolutely. We do have that. prizes for you. We have prizes for you. Come on up. So don't don't be afraid. Oh, wait, wait. Don't be scared. Let Come me on. demonstrate Come the on. the awesome prize we have for you today. It's the <laughs> Who Rag, available in several different styles that I'm about to demonstrate for you for posterity. Awesome. Watch this on the video monitor, folks. And actually, I actually would, would want like to, to hear somebody who's maybe in their twenties. Yeah. About to Oh, questions. No, he's just like taking photos. We take, Somebody we take, has we a take question. A bit, a You'll get this sucker if you come ask a question. Huh? It's a nice question. bandana. It's a nice do rag. Yeah. Or even give your. Oh, I know you have a bandana. Question. Now, now this is the ascot. So he's demonstrating the ascot now. Oh, he's doing the ascot. Coming up next, if you remember how to do it, is the, uh, the the pirate hat. The pirate hat. The pirate hat. <laughs> it, it takes some technique to do. He should start it inside out first. Oh really? With wow. A start it inside out, and then you take each hand all the way through and pull it right on through. Oh this one's gosh. the most difficult to put on, but if you do, you'll get all the props. It will crush your head. No pressure. No pressure. So there, is there a difference between, like, what you sell, I guess, at the store as opposed to, like, um, what you sell in the <laughs> tap nice. rooms? Very nice. What's, no. what's, what's the, the most popular Actually, in there, there's, there's uh, are you talking sales or? Uh, yeah, I'm just talking, what's your most popular beer to sell and one at the tap rooms? Um, it's almost always our Happy Camper or IPA. Wow. I mean, it really is the number one craft beer. You told yeah. me not to gloat, but I'm going to gloat. Uh, it is the number one craft beer out of New Mexico that we Nasty. sell. Nasty. Yeah. That's dope. And guess what? We sell 12 packs of that beer now. Yeah. So Don't you guys sell, like, big, like, Santa Fe Gold no, packs? No, yeah. when, when, when they, when they came out with packs the 18 packs. Yes. Yes. Okay. So... You know we're all about accessibility, yeah. and and obviously we like to experiment and do fun things too. But we also like to take an 18 pack of gold to the river with us and a 12 pack of to IPA. To the river, you got to go to the golf course with it. To the river, oh, yes. so river golf course. We have a hop farm that's on the Rio Grande, and yep. so we I've heard uh, about this. so we, we would, like to uh, take it to the river. So so okay, so we're here and you we're here, we're here to do this show for you guys. And we're gonna do another show for you guys. And we, we, someone's like, "Oh, I thought you guys would want some money. We don't want any money. We want some beer, and we want to go camping with you guys on All the right. hot farm." Right. Say, Say this. That's what we're Speaking doing. Speaking of, I was actually <laughs> about to ask you about yeah. that. Uh, we're gonna be doing it with the Dark Side Brew Crew, and I oh, want to invite you guys as well on July second. So July second is that a weekend? I'm ho assuming. Yeah, it's yes, a, that's a Saturday. The, the right. Fourth it's is Saturday. 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 Yes. I don't know. Hey, I don't know. So I'm just in. just inviting you. It's I'm at in. the, we're gonna do it at the Hop Farm at the Santa Fe I'm Hop in. Farm. So I'm in. Oh, nice. You guys are in. I'm on not that. saying any of these guys are in, but I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> any of you that want to come, Thanks. you're in. in. <laughs> come have a good time at the river there. <laughs> I love camping. I we will do we'll some bring, camping. We'll do some camping, camping, and we'll do some drinking. Well, I, I don't know if you're going to remember anything the I like, next I like, day. Actually, well, I, like black black I can't yeah. promise that. Can we podcast from uh, the camp? Yeah. All right. Right. I don't know if we're going to have internet. Because that, there's you no don't internet. Have to. We'll, we'll, do it. we'll just we do will. audio. Okay. Audio yeah. and video. Yeah. We can record the video, and we can record the audio. That guy's Uh-oh. Signs are flying everywhere. It's getting to that point. Yeah. See, because, I mean, you tried to destroy our sign. It's bad. No, we'll do it. We can we can do whatever you want to do, Sounds man. Good I mean, to we'll me, just man. have a good night of uh, drinking and and just try not to fall into the river. Well, that, Monica that's, was a morph tech before, and that she knows like my that life. you don't want to do that. That's my so. autobiography, Chris. <laughs> I drank and I didn't fall in the river. <laughs> <laughs> Never this once time, fell in the river. This time. No, that's cool, man. We're, we're there, man. We're there. No, that's awesome. you guys are in on that. Sure, sure. So this goes back to the cleanliness of the brewing process. This goes back to the rivers. Um, let's talk about the water and the filtration and the cleanliness of that. Like, like 
any additional chemicals or Let me minerals just tell you or hard all water. About, I'm more than happy, proud even, to tell you about Santa Fe's Santa Fe Brewing Company's water. We're the only oh, yeah. brewery in the state that uses artesian well water. Um, our, our our water is is purportedly ten thousand years old from the water table that we pull up from beneath the earth. We don't add. We actually have to add salts to the water to make it beneficial for for brewing. You need a little pH balance. You need you know tweak it here. Um, but it's the most pristine water that you could pro- you you could possibly get in New Mexico. Uh, yeah. I mean, so we have a I, whole community in Madrid, New Mexico. What they have terrible water! If you've ever been out there, it's disgusting. Okay. And they come with their water jugs. I see them. I look the other way because I'm like, all right, I love you guys, you're regulars, but they come and they fill up their water jugs because they cannot. Literally, like, drink or shower in their water, and our water is yeah. freaking awesome. So, Monica, are- I got to ask, like, how do we test that kind of water, you know? Well, we actually get all of those specs from the water company. Um, they do the m- way better testing than we have the possibility and the equipment for. And that was one of the first things Bert asked when he got there. What is our water standard look like wow uh yeah you can go well, I mean, to the that's, county that's water the authority that's the base, yeah right? and it makes a huge difference with adding uh, minerals or not adding minerals when you're brewing so yeah. it, it is i love the water there that's pretty interesting it's one of the best things well, about working in santa fe is it just drinking the water yeah. is amazing. And don't bring your water jugs after yeah, I no, said that. Don't, I, don't I'm like kind of regretting line. saying not that. A, not a open Please invitation. do not show up with your water jugs at Santa Fe so Brewery. When we showed up, like Silas was showing us the facility, you guys are building like one of the most like technologically advanced filtration systems in the world, aren't you? Uh, in, in the world. In, in the, the world. world. I don't know. That's a lot of pressure. Um, well, that's why I threw it out there. With the new out. brewery, we have uh, plans in place to reclaim and recycle all of our water. Obviously, when you make beer, um, yeah. you well, know, a gallon of one gallon of beer is going to take thirty gallons of water. I think that's the you know that's the statistic that we go by. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna filter. We're gonna that high tech uh, filtration system that's used by the, the aeronautics industry, the government. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got that same contract in place to, to filter okay. our water, which we're gonna reuse and create a, a beautiful, green, lush green uh, atrium uh, for our new uh, area out in, at the brewery, including our cellaring area where we're gonna plant milk thistles to track butterflies and, and pollen. So we've got the whole we get the whole thing coming in. We we're going to we're going to re, we got solar, we're going to recycle water, we're going to bring the plants, we're going to bring the fun, the, the animals will bring the plants to us and and nice. uh, pollinate and ferment our beer. So and then we're going to hunt the animals. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then we're going to eat them. We will, we will <laughs> eat them at a barbecue. Even more important they're going to build a bridge. That's how we do it in Santa Fe. <laughs> do, you re- do you recycle the grain so it goes back to the cows? So oh, yeah. We yes. Have every, yes. Actually. And, and I judge so the cows can be beautiful. And we oh, have, definitely. We have, a, we, have a, we have a genuine ornery New Mexico cowboy who comes by <laughs> and feed, takes every every drop of grain we produce. Bonanza Creek Ranch. Bonanza yes. Bonanza Creek Ranch. He, and he uh, takes every drop of grain we get, feeds it to his cattle. When, you know, when he doesn't have enough, we have people come out and grab buckets for the chickens or pigs. Wow. So uh, we we try not to create waste. When when you're when you're when you're, work, awesome. when you're working on your brewery, you don't want to be the part of the problem. You want to be part of the solution, and we try to address that with every 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 outlet we have. Very cool, very cool. Man, I I, I think I think you know we've really did we cover it. Do you need yeah. anything else? Yeah, I, I I you know I don't know. I mean I I could go on talking about beer for hours, but you know. Yeah. Uh, I think you know we we we've we've. Oh hey, I want to hit on Green Jeans Farmery oh, let's real do quick. This. Okay. Yes. Okay, so this place is kind of amazing. I, I want yeah. Explain exactly what it is. So so Santa Fe Brewing, we wanted to be in Albuquerque forever, and uh, we had all these realtors show yeah. us spaces, and we were like, oh, and. And then did you, did you have a space in Albuquerque before Green Jeans? No, no, no. And and so then we were approached with this concept of yeah. a container park and okay. containers stacked 
I mean, yeah. it blew that us continued. away. It was amazing. So when and they when they when they pr introduced this idea to you, we were like, "What the hell are you guys talking about? Like yeah, containers it's really stacked? Like yeah, we're like, what are you like? How are you going to do this to make it work? To make an actual and, and so the there's some you guys precedents. Have here is incredible. Like, you Google container park yeah. or whatever, and like there's some really cool things in Vegas, and I don't know. We we were just like, yes, like. Kind of a sustainable. How long did that take before you were community. like, okay, this is what we want to do? Um, it was it was pretty quick after they pitched it. We were like, oh, wow. okay, yeah, that is what we're talking about. We're not talking about some random, that's kind of crazy, weird abandoned property. <laughs> yeah, mall, we're talking somewhere. about like creating something where where there's like a a vibrant bunch of businesses that are all getting together and. And all of these different, I mean, we don't want to do a restaurant. That's not our thing. We want to make beer. And here are like five restaurants yeah. right, and right, right. and a, a co-op gym. They're just launching a whole co-op gym with, with different yeah. classes yeah. that you directly pay the instructor. I don't know. It's kind of cool. Like there's just a lot Pretty of cool sweet. things happening here at Green Jeans and, um, it was the perfect fit for us. Okay. So what exactly is it, though? I mean, because I've seen, like, somebody open up, like, one of the uh, things, and it was like they were, like, making – there was, like, plants and stuff inside of one of the cars. I mean, what what exactly is this place? I mean, a lot of people, you talk about it, but I, I, I don't – I know that it's the farmery part. Why is it a farmery? Chris, you ever see one of those big uh, uh, transport ships that go across the ocean and they got the oh, car? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, a bunch of those carts fell off yeah. into the ocean and floated <laughs> up to the beach, and we were like, what do we do well, with those carts? Well, hell yeah. So we said, hey, man, we'll, we'll get them on the cheap, bring them over to Nusani yeah, Fair, bring them over to Albuquerque. If we don't, even, if we don't put a business in them, I mean, we'll these live in them. Are the, 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 the shipping containers we have here now were filled with shoes, <laughs> shoes. ducks, and inflatable sex dolls. Oh. And we... We sold all that to buy the the, nice. buy the buy the lawn furniture, just barely covered the tab, and then what was left over, we built the green chain okay. facility, and that that's the unofficial story. Well, what's the farm part of it? What, that's the what's unofficial the, story of green jeans. The, what's the farm part of it? That's a good question. <laughs> Here we well, go. Nobody knows. I think he initially he one of these containers has a hydroponic. Farm yeah, that's what I saw. Is a hydroponic and farm. And that was one of his big selling points. Well, I mean, we all want a hydroponic farm in our house, but I mean, you know, well, we're, we're growing different things. Uh, you and I. Not to eat. <laughs> well, <but> eating. <laughs> uh, eating. Sure. Yeah. 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 Oh, we're talking about uh, eating. Hydroponic farm, farm for eating. Farm <laughs> table. So. Oh, okay. Very cool. Well. I want to thank you guys for allowing us to do a show here. Thank uh, you very much for having us. I've been us. doing ten drink minimum. This is my tenth year. I'm old. Ow! This show is old. I started this show uh, in Portales, New Mexico, ten You're years ago. You're not old. Just the show. It's both old, yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you would have asked me ten years ago what would be the epitome of what you're doing, and I would be say, I want to do this show live in a brewery in New Mexico, and I can't imagine doing it in any better place than the oldest, biggest brewery in, in the New most Mexico. baddest location in Albuquerque. We really appreciate it. Oh, and you guys let me do that. You. Thank you for doing it. We, we and cheers really to Someone you. asked why I want to do that. That's why I want to do it. I just want to thank, uh, give a shout out to Lisa, our bartender. Thank Absolutely. her. I want to thank our, yeah. our crowd here for being a rocking, supportive gang here. They really brought the show together. Yes. Sorry we didn't have a call-in number. We don't have the Santa Fe, Santa Fe Brewery. <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, everybody from the Ten Drink Minimum for being out here. And uh, we look forward to future endeavors. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love you guys. Uh, I love that you guys are you guys are not a brewery. You guys are a family. Absolutely. It, yes, it's really evident so. like when you hang out with you guys, you guys kind of like, you know, have that cohesiveness and you guys will have a business meeting and then you'll walk outside and then, you know, the business meeting's over and you don't it's just like jet. Friends. You guys like hang out and talk to each other. <laughs> yeah, and that's a family, so. so. And you all drive me crazy too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for coming out. I want to hey, thank Congratulations, Chris, and nice hat. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, yeah, check our show out, com. We have all our cool social media stuff there. I want to thank James. I want to thank Michael. And I want to thank Billy. And I want to thank Smiley. And all the Santa Fe crew because we are 10 Drink Minimum. Yeah.